Hello and welcome to Stampscape Saturday Night Live here. We're going to make a card here that uh, I think a kid would really like. Um, it's com coming up on Halloween. Aliens are kind of a Halloween-ish type of element. I don't know if you see, you usually see more of ghouls and things like that, but I think uh, like an alien type of thing can uh, apply to that holiday. We used to have a, um, a record, I think it was like sounds from Halloween or something like that, and one segment was this um, alien. I don't know if it was an alien abduction or something like that, but uh, uh, that was one of the uh, things. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do this little cow type of abduction right here, coming from a flying saucer, and you know, I, I think that would be a, a pretty cool type of um, visual for um, a card for a kid. It would be a different type of um, Halloween type of uh, card. Hello, Beth. How are you tonight? So, um, with that in mind, um, I thought we would go with the printable holographic vinyl um, with the stars in there. I think a kid would really get a kick out of um, that type of paper being used. Why not add it in there? Now, I'm going to try some new things on here. I, I've just gone with white ink, um, brilliance ink on this type of paper um, to this point, and it works really great because you can use it as a base. But I thought I would try some um, black ink on here as well to get some darker elements. After all, it's supposed to be um, a nighttime type of sky. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it very smooth on here, but I'll see if I can kind of pull it off. I have a feeling that I'm going to go on here with the black brilliance ink, and it's going to be really splotchy. So um, this is an exercise for me here. Um, if you haven't watched these videos before, it's not so much. A lot of them aren't, you know, so much um, instructional as much as they are experimental and... I, you know, all of my experiments do not come out, you know, um, you know, with this, you know, uh, technique, uh, a smooth, smoothly applied <laughs> technique, whatever success, okay, they can be really rough, but it's one of those things, if you're not kind of uh, pushing the envelope in terms of um, kind of your knowledge base on these things, you know what I mean? You're you're, you know what I mean? Which you should do once in a while. Uh, other things are refinement too, of course, but um, I don't know, you should really push out and kind of, you know, I don't know, I, I, I guess amass a, a greater kind of a spectrum of, uh, I don't know, whatever techniques and uh, knowledge. And I think it keeps things kind of uh, interesting in terms of uh, kind of the creative process. So we're going into the lab. <laughs> Hello, Kay, Linda, CM Hawkins, Linda, Kay, Kay. <laughs> Anyone else that's on? Good to have you here. Hope you're all well. Um, all right, so here's the composition right here. There's going to be this little meadow down here. This happens to be the meadow large, um, just an instant, you know, base layer for this. These trees right here, but again, this is the printable vinyl, okay? It's not the um, holographic cardstock, okay? So you can use pretty much any type of ink on here and it will stick. It's the same type of uh, thing that's just on the standard holographic. This one's the starry. This one's just the holographic here. You can use dye-based inks, brilliance, stays on, and shockingly, the clair. Oil-based pigment ink dries on here as well, where the clair does not dry on. Uh, you're just your standard printable photo paper, okay? You know, these two papers are meant to go through inkjet printer types of things, and if you use standard um, pigment inks on those types of papers, you know you're... Kodak, Canon, you know, typical, you know, paper, you know, uh, photo paper things. Um, I don't know. It just, it never dried for me. Maybe there's other brands that dry, but just keep in mind um, that if you're using um, this type of printable vinyl, okay? So use whatever you have. <laughs> 
I would say, if you have this type of vinyl, if you're using something like, um, if you want to replicate this type of thing on a holographic cardstock, then probably use a Stazon or something like that, something that's going to stick to those types of surfaces. Completely different surfaces. They, you know, a lot of them look the same or similar in terms of holographics, but ones that are printable, they have just a completely different surface that allows you to run it through an inkjet printer and print. All right, this is going to be, I have to draw my own flying saucer. I don't have a flying saucer, so. Hello, Yvonne. Um, I'm going to do just, you know, kind of a goofy looking flying saucer, one that, you know, a kid might draw, um, or the kid in me on this one. And we're gonna glue it up there, okay? Or tape it. Um, you know, typical flying saucer type of thing. And then there's going to be a beam of light coming down. I haven't decided completely how this is going to look here, so... Um, or how it's... I've done this type of thing before on glossy cardstock and dye-based inks and whatnot, you know, and I've, I've had a beam, you know, masked off, and I've kind of made the area around it a little bit darker where it's retained you know, the white, this, this one might have to be an additive process because I'm starting off with this really loud surface right here. So um, the question is, is how do I get kind of a nice translucent light beam, you know, where it's not like some kind of opaque, you know, marble column or something like that, where it kind of looks like light over the top of this. I don't know. Um, you know, if I was someone that worried kind of about, you know, about whether something or not is going to uh, come out, I, I wouldn't attempt this. <laughs> so don't think that way, you know what I mean? Just kind of go into your things. And like I said, you know, your stamping room is your laboratory, you know, uh, or think of it that way. A lot of times. It doesn't have to always, you know, but, you know when it comes to kind of experimentation and whatnot. Okay, so I am I need to block off this bottom portion right here because I've stamped this meadow just in black ink. We're gonna have a meadow full of stars, right? And I wanna utilize things like my colored pencils in here because I have a lot of control over colored pencil usage or something like that where when I'm using these kind of like really loud surfaces like this that you know, are a little bit harder to contain, you know, and to utilize in a stamping format. It's nice to couple that with, you know, a type of medium that is like ultra, you know, um, controllable, you know, because colored pencils, you know, I mean, you start using them and you can use them. Uh, no one's intimidated by the use of colored pencils, you know, um, I don't think. I didn't use them for a long time because I like using other types of things that got a little bit more stronger in saturation and values and whatnot. But, um, you know, you can just build up colored pencils as slowly as you want to. And that's something that I like using this type of crazy, loud, wild, visual, reflective surface. Okay. All right. So that being said, I need to use some, I want to put in some clouds in here. And I need to block off this bottom area here where I don't have a bunch of stars showing through it, okay? And um, I'm going to have, I, I'm not putting it just down in this area. I thought I'd have some clouds in the background, you know, for some extra texture and whatnot. But again, I don't want to fuss too much about this because I want it to be real kind of free form. And, you know, I want this card to be kind of like in the spirit of making it for a kid. And in some ways, I think, you know, I want it kind of kid-like in terms of applications, not in terms of abilities, <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, reasonably, um, I don't know, whatever, uh, competent, I guess I, I should say, in terms of, uh, you know, some types of uh, processes right here. I'm going to make this a little bit more irregular here with my cloud. I'm not going to have just the clouds going across the bottom. I'm going to have them a little bit more, I don't know, kind of stylized in terms of their shapes here, or the structuring in the sky, I should say. So a little bit more angled. I did one, um, this one, the other day, and it was just too, it was too straight across, you know what I mean? It, it would have been benefited from this kind of going down a little bit lower, you know, this is just too symmetrical for me. So that was another experiment though, but in the end it's like, eh, you know, I wish I would have done some a couple things a little bit different. So I want to do that that card again um, with those little refinements in mind. So 
when you're going to do your things, you know, this is what my teacher always used to say, um, my illustration teacher, you know, he'd talk about um, final pieces, really commission pieces and whatnot. He would talk about um, uh, doing uh, uh, preliminary types of um, pieces and seeing them like little rehearsals. And then you go into your final performance, which is the final piece. And you know, as students, we thought, ah, we, we, we just want to do the final piece and, you know, not go through all that preliminary work, but, you know, because we're la lazy and whatnot. Um, but, I mean, he was, you know, he's definitely right. So, you know, you can do things, you know, multiple times and get that final performance. He'd, say, he'd always... Um, kind of relate things to like dance he says you don't go just go into you know the performance on stage and do your final thing you practice it you know and he said that's no different than you know visual um uh two-dimensional works you know art and whatnot so um yeah do i do that no hand <laughs> stamping sometimes i do okay and it's really when i'm learning these new th types of things on this these surfaces so this is going to be one of them, all right? All right, but see that cloud in there? Kind of keep it nice and free form and whatnot. It's one of those types of things, if you're using this type of uh, process right here, you move it around a little bit. You don't have to keep things nice and stationary all the time. You can add a little bit like that, move it a little bit, add some more, so that you get this kind of irregular, kind of, un I, I don't know if it's uh, irregular, but just an uneven, um, amount of buildup because there's different types of light on different types of clouds and I think it looks kind of a little bit more I don't know kind of natural looking like that uh, Yvonne yeah these these papers like this these are really fun to, to use they, you know when you're using this type of thing we, we, I, I love you you know I, I mean I sometimes I get the hand green it's like okay I need to do you know matte cardstock or glossy cardstock or something like this if I do too many of these in a row like I, I did, there was a video, I don't know, a series of them a little while ago where I did like eight of these, you know, for that giveaway, uh, for this uh, stampscaping event that they're hosting in, uh, in Norway. And it's like, all right, I need to do like just a plain piece of paper again after doing eight, you know, cards. And there were mirror cards too. But I don't know, doing these things like this and discovering it, it really brings out the kid in you, you know? It's like you can stay kind of, <laughs> it's like that, uh, that Twilight Zone episode, you know, where they're playing, kick, it's called Kick the Can. And it's like, if you, there's these folks in a retirement center going out and playing Kick the Can, you know, and it's about kind of keeping young minds, you know, or something like that. So I don't know, I feel different after I've used something like this, you know, because it takes you back to, it didn't take me back to childhood because they didn't have this thing even. I don't know if they had these things like 20 years ago, but I don't know. I When I look at this, I still get this little bit of a feeling of, uh, you know, what I think I would have felt like had this paper been around looking at it as, you know, as a little kid. It would have been, you know, some kind of amazing service. Not to kids these days, you know, growing up with uh, all their devices and things like that. But, you know, all things being the same, I think they would really like a card on something like this. So it's fun to do it, too, you know. All right, so anyways, adding this down. Now, keep in mind, you know, you don't have to go over this bottom portion too carefully because I'm going to stamp that meadow right over the top of it. You can get your bearings like that. So if you have a little bit of that irregular type of um, lighting or, well, white or lighting within that space like that, you'll have a little bit more irregular types of um, varied light and shadow within that space too. And that's a good thing to do too. So you don't have to do this big, huge, completely equal slathering of it, okay? I mean, just in general, I am using some of this to kind of blot things out. And the reason why, I mean, we could do something. You can say, well, why don't you just do um, this, stamp this out on a piece of white paper down here, and then have that up there um, going into it. And it's because I want that little bit of that integration. I mean, that wouldn't be a bad way to do it, too. You can just have this on a separate piece of paper. 
And through this tree line here, you stamp that out, you know, on that black up here. And then you merge the two together. But um, I don't know. This, this one, I think, will marry the two areas together a little bit more cohesively. Um, I don't know. But if you're doing a bunch of these, you know, I don't know, do it the fast way, I would think. And just bypass all of this type of application down here. This, I don't know, this doesn't take too long, but it does take a decent amount of ink, so. Hello, Paulette. Good evening to you. Yeah, are these fun? You know, these are fun clouds here, uh, Linda. Um, they, I think, I do believe they look kind of realistic or more realistic. Not that, uh, you know, everything has to look realistic in, in scenes by any means. I, I'm for kind of stylized and surreal looking elements and whatnot. Okay, now after you do this, something like that, what you can do is you can kind of go up and go above that um, a kind of template, you know, I mean, you're making a template with your paper towel like this, right? And you go above it and that creates a little bit more of that uh, kind of lighter edge to it, a little mistier edge like that. And I think that'll look good, you know, when we're thinking about this um, abduction light. <laughs> When do you ever use that, uh, you know, kind of terminology when you're doing, um, you know, stamping scenes out, you know, uh, you know, uh, whatever, a tractor beam or whatever. Okay, so let's go with some additional clouds up top here. I'm going to have this kind of flying saucer, I think, coming out of the clouds or I don't know that, you know, there'll be a little bit more clouds up there. And plus, I mean, just having a little bit more clouds up here, it kind of caps off the top of it, too, you know. Um, I'm trying to think here if I want to add in a little bit more black in here, you know, in these shadow areas. Maybe I'll do that after I stamp it. I'll see what it looks like with the uh, with the uh, the meadow stamp down here. I think I'm I think I'm a little bit bright on my camera here. Let's tone that down a touch. There we go. All right, so uh, let's go up here. With this. All right, let's see. I'm not sure how to do this here. I think what, I, I think what I'm going to do is, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna bring in some cloud from over here and then over here, or do I do it the opposite? Do I have more, a brighter cloud here where the UFO is going to be? Maybe, maybe it'd have to be like, lighter here and darker over here uh, okay here let's just let's just keep this easy okay because i'm thinking now so i'm not thinking in terms of uh the process i'm going to be doing here because i'm going to be trying something different so i was thinking i might want it a little bit darker in here because i'm gonna have this silver ufo right there <laughs> and there's going to be lights on the side of the ufo um but I was thinking, okay, if I want to make this darker out here, I can just do it with the black ink. So, see, I haven't been using black ink, so I'm not kind of thinking in those terms right now. It's one of the, the things that, you know, when, when you're doing these things, if you haven't done something for too long, it's not really in your vocabulary. Like set, you know, hard. And there's certain types of notions that we have, you know, that... You know, I'm just like anyone else. You kind of get stuck with That's why I haven't used the foils, you know. I mean, they've been around for years, but I just started using them last year because I, I don't know, I didn't think we'd be able to stamp on them, you know, until I started using like the Brilliance Ink right here and the Brilliance Black. And then, uh, you know, this, you know, this printable vinyl, I mean, what, it's like three weeks ago or something like that, never would have used it at all. Um, had not a pack come across my desk, so um, shocked that it that it works at all. I'm shocked that inks like this. I mean, this is you know pretty well set on here. See this? You cannot do this on foil. Um, 
So that's something that I thought would be happening on this printable foil, a uh, vinyl, okay? But see this right here? I don't have like any ink on my hands and that's just, you know, well, a little bit. <laughs> but that's not too bad for running on, you know, running it over something that you just applied this down. It doesn't look like it would, you know, first of all, it doesn't look like it would stick from everything that I've been practicing on the uh, the holographic card stocks, the foil card stocks over this last year. So, um, yeah. Okay. So anyways, that's my cloud up top there. Um, let's see, let's go with, uh, should we do this? Or, you know, yeah, might as well. I'll add this down. Let's get our, let's situate this right here. And, um, We'll have our UFO kind of right in there. Tractor beam coming in here. Cows kind of, I'm gonna have this cow kind of going like this or something, like rising up like that. I thought I would have like this one, like, like that, getting uh, beamed up like so. When are we ever composing kind of uh, cows getting beamed up to a UFO in scenic stamping, hardly ever. Maybe once a month at most, you know? <laughs> All right, so what ink should I stamp this one out in? Should I go with the uh, Claire stays on um, the Brilliance Black? I'm gonna go with... Um, Let's go with the stays. Oh, no, let's go with the Claire, I think. I'm trying to think of what one is going to give me the strongest, darkest impression here. Oh, let's go with the Claire. When I'm using certain types of surfaces, I can't use that Claire because it won't dry on them. So sometimes I start missing using that. So let's use that one because it will dry on there without any problem. I didn't think about this Hero Hughes one here um, for my tractor beam. This one's a little bit, this Brilliance dries really fast and this one would dry slower. So I'm wondering if I, if I would get a more translucent beam using this. Oh, I don't know. Maybe we'll just stick to the Brilliance and keep things simple. All right. Um, if we don't play with holographic play papers, we won't be young. <laughs> yeah, that one guy, he didn't, he refused in, in, uh, in, um, in that Twilight Zone, um, the movie though, um, as we pan out and he's kind of left there to his own, you know, by himself, he's going around and kicking that can and Scatman Carruthers goes, you know, um, something like he'll get there or something like that. So it's like a happier ending instead of, you know, please come back. <laughs> Maybe the analogy would be um, if we were stamping on a tin can. <laughs> Or maybe for stampers, we stay young if we are doing something like, you know, in stamping that, you know, everyone was stamp doing in stamping 20 years ago, you know? I don't know, what would that be? Everyone was embossing. It was glossy cards. Oh, pens, maybe maybe we all have to use um, um, like Marvy markers to color our pens up to, you know, to stamp them out or something like that. No, no pads or anything like that. Or in scrapbooking or something like that. Maybe we gotta use uh, we gotta use Mrs. Grossman's uh, stickers. <laughs> Does anyone remember that? Uh, the scrapbooking early days of scrapbooking. The scrapbook stores. It was just like rolls and rolls of stickers on the walls. Okay, so I'm wiping off some of this area down here because that's going to be the spotlit. I don't know, it's not really spotlight, it's that tractor beam, but kind of the spotlit area, that's what it's going to look like down here. So I'm just kind of wiping off some of this bottom portion like that. I don't know. Let's see what it looks like here. 
Okay, so versifying Claire. One of the things that I'm, I do tend to, I guess, worry about a little bit when I'm stamping on top of, of these foils and um, unconventional surfaces like this that I've already laid something down on. I'm always worried that these larger um, images like that might not print out. I mean, I have gotten some that don't, or like last time, like on this foil like this, when I stamped into those clouds, I was getting a reverse impression because the ink didn't transfer to the surface, but it pulled, it, it removed where I was making an impression that ink that had been laid down. So I don't know, that concerns me a little bit. On the printable vinyls, I don't know, I've luckily I've been not proven wrong, you know, in terms of uh, its ability, but I've been happily surprised at that I haven't had to worry about certain things not transferring over. And again, it, it's just, it's in my mind that I'm using something like a non-porous surface, you know, like this, where you're adding something down on there and it kind of fish eyes or something like that, and you lift off and half of the ink that you've wanted to transfer on here just kind of vacuum, comes off like a vacuum on your stamp and, you know, it didn't transfer over. It's like a, you know, big open area like that. So I don't know. I, I guess I'll get used to it one of these days, but I ha I'm just not used to it yet. There's always kind of that little, um, I don't know if it's fear, but uh, I don't know, I do kind of, I'm, there's a concern. <laughs> I don't know, I guess it's better to be what, but then if you hold that ink too long on that other um, foil paper, um, where we're using stuff like a stays on, it's like drying on this so that you lift off and you might not get a good impression because that ink has dried on your stamp in the time that you've held it down there within a few seconds or something like that. And then you lift off and it's like, you know, it just didn't transfer onto that non porous surface. So always kind of a bizarre type of, um, I don't know, whatever, um, what is it that I'm looking for? There's always kind of a bizarre type of um, compatibility type of uh, issues that I'm always kind of struggling with because a lot of these are kind of new to me still. So I don't know. I'm just not getting it clear in my head every time. You know, we're working with so many different things too. One of the things that I want to do too coming up here is I want to do some more um, vellum pieces. And that has its own kind of you know, re, you know, somewhat formula for usage too with certain types of media as well. All right, let's see here. I'm going to fill in a little bit here in the trees like this because if we're looking into a scene like this, one of the things that we're doing is you're kind of creating a, a vantage point for yourself or whoever gets this as a viewer. So if you're looking at kind of alien abduction, you know, it would be, it would be a safer vantage point if we're kind of like hidden behind some trees like that. <laughs> you know? So create a, you know, create a little bit of a, you know, a protective barrier for yourself, but don't close it off so much that you can't see anything either. You know what I mean? I want to have that cow down here, so I don't want to put this right here and, you know, where we're like, you know, completely safe. Okay, now see, I've lost some of that cloud up here, so I think I'm going to add another cloud in here. So, you know, it's not like, okay, you add the clouds, then you stamp in there and you can't add any more clouds. You, you get that and get your kind of bearings going in terms of your um, positioning of your main elements and then just go in add in some more. So I think this would be, you know, benefit from some additional clouds in the background and texture maybe, but not too much texture if we're going to have something like this that we want to show up in there. So this has to be in some kind of light, right? Um, getting beamed up like that. Um, 
now that I think about it, I just watched Star Trek, uh, that reboot Star Trek yesterday, where they were beaming around. <laughs> Not like this, but... Uh, and this, cla this uh, cow will go, I don't know, something like this right in here. All right, so, but yeah, I, I think I can use another cloud out here just to kind of balance this one out. Maybe up here, but if I have a little bit of a light version of it in this background, it might look kind of interesting. Yvonne's been stamping since 1989. That's early on in the stamping game, that's for sure. I always say that if uh, I... Stamping really started getting um, getting a lot of momentum in those late 80s like that. And uh, the Carson Convention was a good gauge for the, um, the stamping industry because m there weren't a lot of stamp conventions around. So you had um, Rubberama and the Carson Show going on in California. And, um, you know, most of the vendors or most... Um, companies, most stamp companies wanted to get into Sir, absolutely Carson because that was also kind of the uh, the convention that um, stores would go to and purchase things. You know, it later became things like HIA and CHA, you know, uh, official wholesaler shows. Okay. But you get people like, you know, Carson was so big, you'd get, you know, the buyers from like Michaels coming around and such. Um, to uh, Carson, and then there was an actual wholesale show at Carson. If anyone went, ever went to that show, but that show was um, really starting to pick up, and it started um, going out into all the other rooms at the Carson Community Center. So, um, yeah, that was, those were some ex really exciting times like that, like around those late '80s and whatnot. And then, of course, in the '90s, it really picked up some steam, and there were conventions all over the place. So. Just some really fun stuff. And of course, the store, you know, phenomenon happened too. So let's see. It's happening now in card making. Faux bleaching. Oh, that's cool. Color embossing, fold, coloring embossing folders. Ah, I love it. It's time to go back to the basics. I haven't embossed in a while, but um, I just started doing that like last year. Someone said that they remember me embossing like 20 years ago or something like that at some store, you know. Um, but I said, well, where was that? Because I don't remember doing that, but they never re uh, replied. So, you know, I don't know. Uh, I think I would have remembered that, but I, I don't know. I, I definitely wasn't teaching it or something of that sort. I've never been stamps for many years. Yvonne's been a long time stamper. Can we add the Brilliance White? and then run through the printer to add the image. I don't know about that, Linda. That's a really good question. I don't think I would do that though, because in printers you run it through, um, I just switched this out in my laser printer. There's this roller in there that heats things up, you know, a lot. And it has to, um, and it's the thing that, you know, um, like, merges that toner on there, you know, so I don't know how that would work in like a color printer or something like that. I don't think I would want this substance running through that super, it's like a super hot iron roller that's, you know, in contact and it's rolling like this, you know what I mean? I think there would be a potential issue with getting that Brilliance ink on that hot roller, um, which I'm guessing happens in inkjet printers as well. I was just talking about a black and white laser printer, but I got to think that's in there. Um, if you did something like that, I think you would have to take something. If there's some kind of thing out there that you could coat something like this so that when you ran it through the printer, it wouldn't be coming in direct contact with that um, type of thing. But I, I think it would just be too much of a, a you know, a, you I don't know, there might be videos out there and something like that, you know, and if it was a safe thing to do, but I wouldn't want to be the first one to try something like that out because, you know, if you're talking about printer repair or something like that, you know, it's just too expensive of a, of a um, experiment, I think. So in other words, I mean, if you do experiment, you know, go over like a friend's house or something like that and try it on their printer. <laughs> uh, 
Do I always have to say after that type of comment? Yeah, I'm just joking, you know? I, I hope everyone knows. If it sounds absurd, like I've, I think I've mentioned before, I'm just joking, okay? I, I don't know who's watching. Someone might be watching for the first time and they're like, yeah, I'm never watching that uh, channel again. You know, someone's talking about, you know, you know, not caring about other people's uh, stuff. Okay, let's see here. Um, is that too kind of open an area like that. Like I said, I, I wanted to go for a little bit more of that irregular type of thing in here. Let's go like this right here. But let's make this one really um, transparent, okay? All right, so I'm just going to put a little bit down like so. And again, I'm not thinking about it in terms of that black. I think I want to use some black on here. Um, on the perimeter, just to kind of mute some of it. But see that cloud like that? I think that'll be kind of a nice little added touch right there. Um, yeah, I don't know if it would be the heads on those, you know, in terms of your cartridge. Yeah. Um, I don't think I would try it. It was the embossing that got... 90% of the people that got that were in stamping, I think, in the 80s especially, it was maybe early 90s too, but um, embossing was the thing that got really got people in, um, into it, into stamping. I, I'd ask how people got into stamping. Um, a lot of times, you know, as we were sitting around waiting for workshops to start, I don't know, I was just always kind of curious, you know, just to, you know, create some conversation or whatever. And I'd say, how did everyone get into stamping? And, you know, I'd just go, we'd go around one at a time. And it was always embossing. Like eight out of 10 people would say embossing. But then it changed in the late 90s. It was eight out of 10 people would say stamping up, got them into, uh, got them into uh, stamping. Okay, let's put some more of that cloud on this side too. I guess that little tractor beam um, would be the thing that uh, would be one of the more kind of dominant light sources within this type of scenario here. So we'll have some of these clouds reflecting some of that light in here, okay? One of the things that's interesting about this type of paper too um, is that when you lay this down here, kind of what you see is what you get. If you lay this down on foils or glossy cardstocks or whatever, and it's over a darker area, that white looks different when it dries. But when you're adding it on this printable vinyl, what that looks like right there, right when it's been freshly applied, is what it looks like after it's completely dry. Maybe because this is drying so fast, we're getting a really good indication of what something is going to look like, um, you know, instantly. Okay, now see this down here where I'm getting a lot of that um, translucency with that star showing through, which isn't so bad, but I think I'll, we'll make that a little bit more opaque right in there, um, which will um, it'll also allow for a little bit more um, colored pencil buildup in those areas. Where you add a little bit more of this right here, if you want to add more of the colored pencil layering in there, I think this provides a little bit more of a surface for that colored pencil to go on there. If you haven't seen me use this printable vinyl too, unbelievably to me on this brilliant sink right here, it creates kind of a, a surface akin to like something like a piece of white copy paper and you can add colored pencil down on that as a surface where you can't really add it directly onto that printable vinyl and ha have it show up, you know, to any, you know, reasonable degree. You, maybe you can get some kind of really light application of it on there, but um, this pigment ink works for um, just different types of purposes on here, not just to create um, cloudy effects or white areas on holographic starry. It's providing a foundation for other types of media that you normally 
might not be able to use directly on the surface like that. So it's like, I don't know, it's, it's kind of weird. You're, you're making your own kind of usable area as far as certain types of um, paper uh, or media, media goes, okay? All right, so something like that there, okay. I'm trying to imagine this with some of that black ink, which I'm, you know, I don't know, I haven't done it before yet, so I need to see what that's going to look like here. Um, let's see, Linda has cloud picks on her own, probably referring to the photo stamping, which is excellent. I really like the idea of photo stamping. Um, uh, if you have your own pictures too, because I was mentioning to someone um, that if they have their own pictures used and they're using it in a photo stamping kind of exercise, um, this is just stamping on top of a photograph right here. That's with the palm trees. Um, but if you have your own, um, photographs like that, I don't know, it can be, it, you can, I don't know, it can take you back to, you know, that moment when you took those, um, photographs and you utilize within your, you know, your stamping process, um, which creates a little bit of, you know, an additional layer of uh, kind of meaning, personalized meaning behind things. Or it'd be kind of cool, it'd be really kind of cool if you had some kind of like photo that you've taken when you were with someone, you know what I mean? It'd be kind of cool. It's like, oh my God, you know, and you're sharing a sunset together and it's like, you make them a card at some point in time later on using that same sunset. You know what I mean? Like a friendship card or whatever. Wouldn't that be cool? Okay, so anyways, here's that cloud. Ooh, that one's really bright right like that. But again, we're going to go in here a little bit and add some additional tones in there. It almost looks like daytime in here. It's so light, huh? It is starry though. I need to, I, here's what I, the type of thing that I'm kind of, I need to consider in here is that I'm not going for something like super realistic or anything like that. Not that you can with starry, you know, types of elements like this, but I, I really want to keep this kind of like a, a more playful type of exercise with the, um, the purpose in mind. Like if I was giving this to like, you know, I don't know, like a kid, I don't know, whatever, two to, 10 or something like that. I don't want to give it to like a high school kid. <laughs> they wouldn't give a darn about handmade cards. Me, I don't know, you know, probably not. Okay, so um, let's see. So these two are gonna be in here. If you just joined in, this is gonna be like an alien abduction card, kind of a Halloween-ish type of theme like that. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna put this UFO up there. And again, I want, you know, we're playing, you know, we're using holographic printable vinyl like this, okay? We wanna keep this nice and light in terms of uh, the theme of this here. Um, let's see. So US standard UFO types of uh, things, it's gonna be like something like this. I'm gonna have these little things like that. We can have like a little, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that little dome up top like this. I'm drawing this sideways like this and then the tractor beams coming out like, you know, I don't know, it's like this or something like that. It's gonna go down like that. All right, so when I'm done with this one, you're gonna be thinking, uh, there's no way Kevin drew these, you know, all these different designs like this. I saw him do a UFO and it was horrible. Um, let's see here. All right. Now, I don't want to take too long on this, but again, I don't want to just completely embarrass myself for the 10 people, you know, or whatever, even the five people that are watching this video right now. <laughs> uh, here, let's see. Let's see here. Let, let me, I need a straight edge here. Okay, let's see. Let's go like this. Um, that was one of the, one of my favorite things to draw when I was a kid was, were UFOs. Okay. So it was like, I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to remember the ones that I drew back then or what they look like. I think they were, I think they were like, 
I don't think it was this thing. I think it was this right here. I draw I draw a lot of UFOs and things like tanks. You know, it was a lot of World War II types of uh, things back then. A lot of it was like I was like copying my brother, and he was like all into you know like models and things like that. They were all kind of like World War II types of things. You know, like tanks and and battleships. He made um, he was the one. You know, he was some that made um, like um, models. You know. And whatnot. I never really got into it. I think I made one. But I was the one that was drawing all the time. He drew two. He was five years older than me, so he was into that type of thing. So typical, like if I, you know, if we were doing something like a like a Twilight Zone or what was that? What was that movie where that there was that robot that came down to Earth and um, uh, they had a remake with Keanu Reeves as the the main guy but that type of flying saucer i want like a stereotypical like flying saucer type of thing right here and then here's what i'm going to do i watch this on a i looked up a cow abduction on um youtube right before logging on here and there was this little flying saw i don't know this guy made this kind of little diorama of like a abduction thing and uh, this is three dimensional and he used these little LEDs up here. So there was these lights like that. And then for his, at the base of this, he used like a metal uh, or a glass cup, you know, as that tractor beam, but he had a little light coming from underneath here. His was three dimensional, it was like diorama. And then he, um, I forgot what cow or I've, I forgot what he put inside there, but it looked really cool. So there we go like that. Okay, now I'm using the side of it. It's going to be silver, okay. Um, but that is our general layout right there, I think. So let's see how this goes here. Um, I'm not drawing UFOs very often, so, uh, let's see. Um, what did people say here? Thanks for thanks for joining in the the chat equal equally equal it madness. <laughs> I can't even I, my my uh my my text here is really small. Sorry about that. Thanks for joining in on the chat. Great to have you. It'd be cool if I made this little UFO out of um, different, uh, you know, material. If, you know, if the genre of UFO, um, UFO scenes, you know, gets a little, you know, more um, repetitive with me. We'll do like the, uh, like a little dome out of something else. I should put like this little creature in there, but I don't know if we won't be able to really see it on this side like this. Was was that movie called The Day the Earth Stood Still? Maybe someone already answered that, but it just came to mind. Uh, the Great Canadian Stamp Company. I remember that company, Yvonne. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't know who's around anymore. I, I think I saw that. I have the Canadian Stamper magazine did you have a subscription to the canadian stamper that uh i don't know what it was bi-monthly or something like that um yeah 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 yeah, yeah. tell us yeah the day the earth stood still thank you thanks cm yeah you know one of the things that's really awesome about these chats like this um is that anytime we're trying to think of something like that someone knows the answer to it and some of it's, you know, now that that was a big movie, but um, I don't know, things like on media, media and stuff like that. I was on that workshop the other day with a, a bunch of people from the, uh, the um, Foiling Snobs Club, uh, you know, um, Facebook group and any questions. See, that question came up about the uh, running this 
um, Brilliant Sync through a printer, someone in there probably would have known that because they use those, you know, they use all kinds of different things in that, you know, for the people that are doing like foiling all the time. And uh, I don't know, it was really awesome. Okay, so here, I need a smaller um, uh, permanent pen. Let me go grab one of those. All right, let's see here. So this is going to be my UFO right there. Okay. And we're going to do kind of this, roughly this type of idea on this side, because that's, the, you know, that's what real aliens, you know, look like. Real alien spacecraft looks like, right? I wonder what the first... Uh, movie or whatever came out or sighting came out where aliens were in saucers, you know. Mulder and Scully. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't want, I wasn't watching kind of series TV during those days, but I did start watching it kind of in syndication a little bit more. But I remember, um, there were like coffee houses and things like that where they would have viewing parties and it was like on a certain night and then they changed nights or something like that and that really messed up kind of the uh the the plans for um you know some some of those coffee houses all right now you might not be able to see it because i'm doing this on silver foil like this i thought about doing this on um, a holographic foil in, you know what I mean? But I thought it would blend in too much with the background like that. Now I want to do some things on this too. We're going to add some white ink over the top of it where these little lights are really glowing because I knew that this wouldn't match up very well at all with the background. But like I get, you know what I mean? I specifically wrote in the uh, description of this that this is like the type of thing that we'd be giving to like a little kid. <laughs> so I don't have to have this perfectly merge in with the background and things like that. It's like given me license for a complete kind of freedom and just, you know what I mean? Just a kind of a, a lot more of a, a playful kind of execution of a, of a whatever technique here. Okay. So let's see, let's go with this across this way. I don't need, I should do this with like a clear thing because that, yeah, that was pretty reasonably straight I guess okay you guys can't even see it which is good <laughs> it's like uh, maybe don't look at this right isn't that like a perfect type of um, sentiment for a uh, for like a demonstration for the uh, demonstrator to say don't look at this all right so we have this right here okay like about like so. So I'm going from memory when I, when I saw that alien. And I think, okay, so these circles right here represent light. So I'm thinking um, that I'm going to use um, my, I think I have a good, applicator for that, which is the three millimeter paint pen. All right. And then we'll add in those dots right in here. Hello, uh, Deborah. Thanks for joining in. Viewing parties for The Walking Dead every Sunday. Uh, where do you live, Phyllis? Yeah, that's really cool. It sounds like an art theater, art house theater, something like that, you know, that would be doing something like that, which I, you know, I didn't know that type of theater is around anymore to do something like that. I watched The Walking Dead through, I don't know, what, what season is it up to now? Um, I think it was like the second Negan season or something like that. Was that his name? I don't know. I need to start watching some of that again. Uh, we, we were talking about that. The family's been talking, you know, about possibly, you know, restarting that. We binged um, 
you know, as soon as my kid got old enough, it's like, okay, we can start watching The Walking Dead. And uh, I don't know, we watched a few seasons. I don't know, we just lost steam on it, you know. Um, I don't know, we were watching a bunch of other movies. My, my kid is like, like totally into horror uh, movies. Okay, so I'm going to test this out and see. Yeah, this is perfect for this, okay. Um, this three millimeter paint pen, okay. Um, how many windows, or I don't know, these aren't windows, huh, on flying saucers. Let's see, should I center it? Should I put that, you know, I'll, yeah, yeah, might as well, we'll center it. Okay, so I'm gonna go, let's see, let's go. Go like this. Looks like roughly seven will fit on here. All right. Boy, that sure looks like a realistic UFO. <laughs> yeah, that's not, it's not too bad. All right. So we'll add in some additional lighting on that too. I don't know, maybe we'll do some shading on it as well. I'm not sure. Um, But, uh, yeah. Okay, so let's see here. Let's get our get our bearings here, and let's look at think about that tractor beam coming down this way, like about like that. All right. The tractor, I, I've been able to get kind of roughly what I think I've been going after with these clouds right here. I thought it would look real lumpy like this everywhere, but the beam, I don't know if I want it, you know, too lumpy looking, um, but I don't know. It, I haven't had too many, too much problem with it here. I thought it would be too rough to get like a smooth looking beam. I'll just, I don't know, I'll take it real slow here, I guess. But let's go with, um, I'm going to measure this out a little bit. I usually don't do that, but okay, so I'm going to go... I'm gonna put a little dot up top right here. And let's see, that beam will be roughly, let's see. I'll have that as my vanishing point up there. So it's coming down here. So by the time it gets to that, it's like that. And I'm trying to, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the base of this right here where this is going to come in contact down here, okay. And so let's go. Okay, so that I think that'll be about right. So let me measure this off a little bit. So sorry about taking. You know, there's a lot of uh, technical aspects to alien abduction that you really have to consider if you're going to, you know, do a depiction of it. <laughs> The um, the uh, the distance between the uh, sides of your cards in terms of the angle of the beam, you know, are going to be really key to making it look realistic. <laughs> okay, folks, I, I always have to say I'm joking because every time I say something like that in my head, there's someone you know talking to someone or typing a email to something, uh, <laughs> <you know? laughs> uh, or I don't know, someone might have th thought I was uh, not kidding. You know, sometimes I'd say something like that in a workshop, and then, um, you know, I someone would go down, and it's like, you know, they're, you know, where they're taking notes like that. All right, so um, let's see here. All right, I can't see the dot down here anymore. Yeah, okay, it's right there. All right, so I lose the dot every time I turn this around. Okay, here it is, like that. Okay, and where's that ship going to be? The ship's going to be right here. 
So let's do kind of a little dot right here. Okay, so that's our van. I, I, okay, you guys can't see that at all. It's just the paper's too light, but there's the dot right there. So this beam's going to go roughly, or not roughly, but exactly from, oh, let's see, I'm going like that. And like this, okay. This is our tractor beam template, right? Your tractor beam template should be um, like a Canson 90 pound uh, heavyweight cold press cardstock. <laughs> All right, so that is it right there. It's like tractor beam design, you know? It's like the thing that takes takes the longest in doing uh, this whole card, huh, it seems. Okay, so I'm just going to add this down, like about like so, and my gosh, I can't even see this from my angle that I'm at right here. Sorry if my head gets in your way. Uh, okay, so I'm, like I said, I'm gonna add this in very lightly like this. Okay. Can you see that at all? I'll try to even it out a little bit if it gets real kind of blobby in some areas. And if it gets real blobby, I'll try to make it look a little bit more purposeful too. Now see, one of the things that we're gonna to have to do too is after we stamp those cows getting, you know, in here, I'm going to have to put some of this lighting on top of the cow as well, you know, where they're illuminated. You know, because this is like a, it's like a really strong spotlight, right? So here's what I'm, here's my theory right here. Um, I have a lot more ink right up here where it's lighter at the source of the light. And then as it moves down here, it's getting a little bit lighter, okay? Um, I'm trying to think of if I want to add this right over the top of my tree line right there. I don't think I want to add it completely over the top, but let's illuminate some of these trees right here that are within that beam, you know, that light source a little bit. So let's make them a little bit lighter and especially like over the top part of those trees, maybe not over the whole thing, you know. Uh, just so that they it varies a little bit from, you know, the trees that are outside of it, so. And then Okay, I'm gonna leave those trees down there. We'll do it freehand without this on here. So, leave it like that. Okay, it's not too bad. I think that looks, I think that's about right like that. Let's get our bearings and see what it looks like like that. Okay. I think that looks reasonably, um, I think that looks reasonably I don't know, what's the word? Realistic. No way. <laughs> so see, like that, and like that. <laughs> I feel like gluing this down already. And, okay, so I'm trying to think if I want anything else out here on the sides, to the sides of it. So again, here we're going like this. Kind of getting the, uh, you know, get, I'm starting to see kind of what this is uh, going to be looking like a little bit right now. Like this, I want the, maybe like this. So you angle them this way and then this one the other way. If they're going like this way, then you go with this one a little bit this way. Okay, so you keep this kind of this serpentine type of um, visual going up like that. Okay, I think it looked better like this though. I don't want to go like this though. I, I guess you could, but I think it takes it away a little bit too much from, if you put something upside down like this at first viewing, you know what I mean? If someone just glances at this, I don't, they're not gonna know what these things are. And you want to be able to capture, 
you want them you want someone to be able to kind of notice like instantly a little bit of what's going on okay and like if you put the the especially like the, these cows like that that are just too much you know too flipped like that i think it would be just i don't know i don't think people would know what that is and maybe that looks better up like way up there like that so they're going off in perspective like that you have the larger one right here and smaller one like that so um beams of white like vertical lighthouse beams yeah this is an excellent um uh lighthouse type of um effect to utilize in here i just gave away my um starry um lighthouse uh, scene that i did um i don't know when i first started experimenting with this which hasn't been very long let's see what does that say i would create the beam area and then decide if you need more clouds okay um that would be a good idea too. I just kind of do those lightly because I knew I wanted some because I needed some containment around in here. Um, and remember, I want to utilize some of that black in here too. Just your standard AMC. That's interesting, huh? Showing that Walking Dead. I'm surprised that Walking Dead though, they're still doing that. I didn't think it was quite as, I don't know. Is it still, I don't know. Do you ever go to that there or uh, Phyllis? Here doesn't do anything like that, unfortunately. Yeah, I thought it would be more of the art house things, but I don't know. Uh, a lot of those theaters are, you know, there's a lot more things like um, classic movies um, showing in the theaters these days. I'm, I find they were doing that before a little bit, but um, I would have thought more of the uh, types of theaters that would have more of the, like the film festivals going like that. Time to produce some UFO stamps. The UFO, nature, uh, nature, uh, or it wouldn't be called nature, it would be like unnatural, the unnatural uh, uh, set number one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see. Uh, oh, yes, wider to beam up the house. <laughs> okay. Have you watched? I haven't watched Nope yet. I, I need to watch that. I do want to watch that. Uh, I've watched the other Peel movies, though. Okay, so, um, so you see this beam has come down here. So let's affect some of these um, trees a little bit more. Let's put some of this uh, a little bit light on top of here, like so. But on these trees, like this, let's put a little bit of lighting on the inside of these trees like that. Do you see that right there? So it's capturing some of that light like that. So I always like to make those types of things within the scene, kind of interactive. You create dialogue, okay, when you're doing visuals. It doesn't have to be scenes, but scenes are a really great place for visual dialogue to happen, be it, you know, you have a, a fisherman here, and you know, a fish jumping out of the water over here, or just, you know, there's a cabin over here, and someone walking up a road to the cabin, so you're creating visual dialogue between um, you know, the subject matter or focal point or whatever and the destination, okay? So in something like, um, it doesn't have to be anything that formal, okay? But within scenes, it's really awesome because oftentimes we're depicting some sort of lighting within some kind of scene. You don't have to have anything like formally, like a sun showing there, but there could be light, a lighter area in your scene, and then you just have this could be your visual dialogue, you know, the, you know, the, str the, the strongest visual dialogue could just be a little bit of pigment ink on a tree that's reflecting that light. So you have lighting coming in from some direction, and you have that light reflecting off some of these. It could be in the form of a little bit of pigment ink like this, or you can do, you know, a couple little highlights with a paint pen or gel pen or something of that sort, you know what I mean? So, um... As far as like visual dialogue, things relating to one another within a piece, you know, lighting's a really great way to do that. And it can just, like I said, it could be really something that's really easy and simplistic to do. Um, so that you have that type of thing going on within a space. It makes it a little bit more dynamic that way. Um, things, you know, affecting some, you know, things affecting 
other things. So look at these clouds right here. These clouds got a lot lighter with that beam right, right in there. But, you know, I think that looks pretty cool like that. Now we have this beam. We see the source of that light like that. So if you want to, I think it looks fine as is, but you can do things like um, you can make the illumination of your clouds a little bit lighter in some areas where it's picking up some of that light within that space. I don't know if that's making it look better or worse. Um, yeah, because it's kind of getting lighter and lighter where I want to make some areas a little bit darker. I don't know. It's looking okay as it is. I don't want to just like, uh, you know, ruin it. <laughs> you know, but... Okay, this is where I'm taking my own advice, okay? I get, you know, in areas like this as well sometimes. Hello, Linda. And I have questions too. Like, not all the time, but on something like this, I'm thinking, I wonder if some black would look good in here, okay? And so this is what I do. Um, I'm telling myself in this case, hey, you know, um, if it doesn't work out, you know, just go over it with other white ink again and just obscure the marks that you just put down. So that's one of the things, okay? But also, as I'm applying some of this... Um, black ink in here like this. I'm not applying black. I'm just, see that, that was a few taps like that. I mean, that's barely visible to me right in front of it. So that could be the amount that you're laying down at any given time. So that's what I always kind of recommend, you know, if you're going with the white and you're not sure if you want to add some of it, just go with a really super dry application where it's barely visible with each tap. And within 10 taps or something like that, you get a little bit of an application, visible application of it, right? So it's, there's really, it's hard to kind of mess up when you're just adding in just this tiny little bit, you know, at a time of any given medium, okay? It's when we kind of go in there like this and, you know, the big slathering of whatever it is that it's a lot more out of control that way. It's a lot more spontaneous, you know, and I'm all for spontaneity and uh, just kind of, you know, charging into something um, as well. It's like a more akin to like, you know, stamp expressionism or something like that. But I would do that on a type of medium that you're really comfortable with, you know, where that becomes part of that kind of process or energy. Uh, but for me, if I'm kind of experimenting around with something, I, you know, I don't, I'm not sure if I want that type of uh, um, expedient, you know, kind of process like this. Okay, so this is what this is looking like right here. I'll show you the difference between this side and this side right here, you know. Now, it looks kind of out of place right now because it's the only thing that's of that value across the whole thing. So you kind of have, when you're adding anything new into the mix and you're only adding it in one area, the other areas don't relate to it at all. So you kind of have to, you know, blend it around a little bit or utilize more of it across the page. That goes for like little tiny like highlights like that. If you add like a bunch of highlights right there, it's gonna look totally out of place where there are any other highlights anywhere else. So um, keep those types of things in mind um, when, adding something like that. I think it looks pretty good like that. See that cloud right there? It's a little bit more, there's a little bit more volume to it, I guess. And again, this is going to be a little, you know, this is going to be, um, you know, it's supposed to be nighttime here, so. And I want it to be slightly ominous, you know, but again, you know, I don't want it, you know, like spooky or anything like that. It's supposed to be just fun. All right, so this is what, again, this is what I'm adding here. It's like a, it's like a 2%, it's like a 2% gray, okay? So, you know, with repetition, if I add it down there, I'm kind of getting, I'm probably achieving like a 5% to 7% gray maybe right in here. And this is going to give me a little bit of that vignette in here, okay? So this is like really light down here. Um, yeah, maybe I'll add in some of the, uh, something like a sedge filler down there for a little bit more texture. And remember, after you add the black on top of this, you can always add more of the white, okay? 
All right, let's see. I'm getting I'm getting a lot more kind of like gray scale up here too. Some of the gray looks pretty reasonably rich in terms of the tone of it. I guess you can add like a template like this and you can add in like some dark areas as well, you know. All right. And when you do this little thing with a little bit of a vignette too, it doesn't have to be like a super strong vignette, like black or anything like that. But when we just kind of frame things off like that, we create a lot more containment Compositional containment, too. Let's see. Go like this right here. Go like so. Eh, I think that'll do it. Okay, so here, I'm going to add a little bit of this tone on this Flying Saucer 2. Uh, I don't know if it's... No, remember, this is... I'll need to spray seal this one. Um, because this is the silver foil and the brilliant sink will dry on here, but it's not going to adhere to it even when dry. Okay. Yeah. And you can't, I, I can't blend this out using, um, like a stays on ink or something like that. So with stays on, you wouldn't have to do that. Um, but with this one, the brilliance, you will, I don't know. I mean that, that, you know, for me in some ways that, that creates reason enough to not do it, but see there's some of that tone on there, if you can see it like that. It's a little bit richer looking, I think. All right, let's see here. Um, that's cool. Uh, I, I'm talking about with Phyllis, with the, uh, the Walking Dead uh, viewing party. I know a lot of people love that uh, show back when, but I always thought, you know, that would be kind of cool to watch communally, you know what I mean, with a lot of other fans and whatnot. It, I can't think of, uh, you know, too many other shows that would that would have that type of uh, following like that uh, of late. Sporting events, for sure, you know, like on away games or something like that. But uh, as far as like fictional types of series, you know, how much fun is that? Okay, so let's see. The most fun part of the uh, card, adding in the flying saucer. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna like that. I'm like touching all that black up there right now. Uh, I'm finding that kind of smudging it around, I think is helping it a little bit. Okay, so let's go like that. And let's add in, should we do the cows right now? I'm gonna add in that, uh, I wanna see that, uh, flying saucer with the, those kind of glowing lights on there too all right uh q-tip okay 100 percent cotton uh just like with all these cotton applicators like that 100 percent cotton you know they're not i don't know i think i bought this i think this bag was like a dollar it was like on sale at ralph's you know this, the grocery store chain here I had just bought another bag at like Target. So this was the Target one, okay? And these cotton balls are larger and, um, but they're not as dense, they're fluffier, airier, okay? But then these ones, um, they're 100% cotton, but they're a lot tighter though. And that's what I, you know, I think I like these ones better. Uh, 
Okay, so let's make some of these lights glow a little bit more. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I saw those previews on that uh, Nope. Uh, nope is a movie, folks. Um, that when, when did it come out? It came out of like four months ago, maybe, or something like that. Um, I'm waiting for it. Everyone was saying, okay, you know, some of the reviewers were saying, okay, you got to go see this like in a like in a theater, like in a theatrical type of environment. But I don't know, we just didn't get around to that one. So we'll be watching that at home. But anyways, you see a little kind of that glowing light. So instead of, um, like, you know, when I was talking about visual dialogue, when you put something like this too, um, I think that looks fine as is. But then when you do this, when you have this kind of this mistier kind of diffused lighting right here, in a sense, what you're saying is that, you know, there's moisture in this air between us and this ship or, or right around that ship. So that lighting right there is in a sense, it's having some visual dialogue with all that mist that's in the air right around it, right? All the sediment in the air and whatnot because it's reflecting off something. So um, I don't know. I If you haven't used um, kind of some white pigment ink in a scene in very light applications, I'd really recommend it, okay? And you apply it where um, there are lighter areas and where they kind of transition into the darker ones usually. I mean, you can put it other, in other areas like that, but I, those are some really effective types of usages of it. Oh, let me see. I was thinking about doing some splatter painting background on here, but it's too late for that. You know, unless I mask off the the uh, the ship right here. I don't think I want to do that. Okay, and see where this light is coming out from right here. I'm going to put, I'm trying to think if I, should I use the cotton ball instead? Let's use the cotton ball, I think, um, right here. And let's put some white ink down there, okay. Where that light is coming out the bottom like that. About like so. Okay. See that right there? It's just a little bit of that lighting on the ship. Okay, I mean, maybe maybe I put too much right up here, but I don't know it, it kind of it kind of sets the ship into the scene a little bit more by having some of that element in front of it like that. Okay. I mean, we can you know do that in other areas too. Let's let's do this a little bit coming from the top. I don't know what that would be, you know, or why that would be, but you know, like a nope, you know, like they said, it was kind of obscured in this kind of this cloudy area, kind of moving in and whatnot, like so. And this is also okay. Now we have the white in here, you know, so we've added black like this. So if you want to add, build this up a little bit more like that, and put some a little bit of tone over your black, you can do that. But I'm almost, you know, I, I guess this is, is kind of good in a way is that I'm not too aware. I, I totally forgot about where I added the black, but the black is kind of like right in here. And then the corners like about like that. So me not thinking about it, I guess, you know, to me, it blended in just fine. You know, where I'm not really aware of it at this point in time. Let's tweak this a little bit more with some of this white ink like so. And let's take into consideration where this cow is going to be. So this cow, this this is the one part of this cow. So if I put this right here, I'm gonna have this darker area in back of it. I think I need to, I, I don't want this cow so far up here. I want this like in this lower portion in the meadow, but see this head right here. We need to make, take all of that out of there like this or really diffuse it like this with white so that the head of the cow is, isn't competing with this darker texture behind it, okay? So I'm going to lighten that up like that. So in your alien abduction scenes, remember to lighten up those trees behind its head. <laughs> put that, uh, 
put that, that was like point number, um, really important tip number five in alien, alien abduction uh, things. Uh, pine tree obscurity, background pine tree obscurity for head definition. That's going to be on the test at the end of this, uh, at the end of this um, live stream. So uh, you want to really make sure that you have that one down. Okay, so that is that right there. Uh, let's see. And I've made this little area a little bit lighter. Where are these guys going to get like that? Okay. So we're gonna, you know, we're kind of emphasizing the um, the silhouettes of these objects like this. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's go with the versifying again. I think. Beam me up, Scotty. I met Scotty. Well, and didn't meet him, but um, I used to go to comic book conventions, and uh, they would typically be comic book and science fiction conventions, okay? This is in the uh, early 80s when I was collecting comic books, and one of the conventions that we went to, um, Jimmy, Jimmy du Duhan was um, a guest who was Scotty in the original series, and... Um, so he was the DS. I mean, he did a lecture at the show and, you know, would typically be, I don't know if he was in a booth signing autographs or something like that. He might have been. But at this particular show, um, they were offering dinner with, you know, Jimmy Doohan. So um, the hotels that were, uh, these conventions were at, usually at hotels. They're not like San Diego Comic Con now or something like that. But um, um, just in one of the banquet rooms, you know, where there's probably wedding receptions going on at other times. Um, they had a, you know, little, whatever, three course dinner with uh, Jimmy Doohan as the uh, the guest. And <laughs> I completely forgot about that. And uh, this friend of mine um, that I'm still in contact with uh, from high school, um, he said, yeah, we had dinner with Jimmy Doohan at that convention. I was like, what? And then I was like thinking, I have a photograph of Jimmy Doohan at this podium giving this lecture. And I, I was thinking, okay, that's that's where that was taken from then. I was just, I don't know, I was surprised that I didn't remember that. Okay, so I'm going to take the shadows out. There's these little shadows because these this image right here is called cows grazing. So I'm just going to wipe off the little tiny bottom anchoring kind of shadow which is like just a couple little dots at the base of these two cows. Okay, and then let's see, let's go like this right here. Um, the cows haven't stopped grazing even though they're getting abducted. <laughs> but so be it like that, all right. And let's see, let's wait till, for that to dry just a touch. I, maybe it's dry already. This one's dry. And then let's add that white ink right over the top of it like that. Are you going to pop your UFO up off the... Oh, I didn't do that, Linda. That would have been a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that would have been, that would have been pretty cool, having it three-dimensional like that. Now, why don't I add in some little, I'll add in some crystal stars into it. Again, this is, you know, it's like it with the idea, we're doing this card like as if it were, you know, we were giving it to, like I said, that whatever target age, like, you know, some kid that's, you know, whatever, two, three years old, up to maybe 10 or something like that. I don't know, when it would get kind of jaded. It's like, yeah, you know, you give them a card or something like that. It's like, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, uh, a raised, you know, kind of thing in there would have been really cool. Or someone, I, you know, I'm now I'm way too lazy to do something like that. But if you had one of those cards with a pull tab right here, you know, where this can go, maybe you would cut off something like this. Hey, hey who, who, who was the one that watched uh, um, that that nope here? Let's see, uh, K, K, K's. 
do a cloud like this and then do with this little cutout right here, you know, where that saucer can go into there where you have one of those cards where this thing's connected and then you pull that out, you know, like right over here and it comes out from the car. <laughs> you know, that's that little area like that. And it comes out like that, or I don't know, it, I don't know, maybe not going down like that. Oh, hey, check this out. You can do a pull tap like this, right? Over here. So you'd have to have this slit in this card going this way. I guess, it, I don't know if it would work. And then you have the slit in the card starting right here, down here, and then you have one or two things connected to that pull tab, but that pull tab's up this way, you know, like this. And these things are going like up like this, you know. At like an inch or two or something like that. That'd be kind of fun. Okay, is that, I already forgot what I was going to do. I was getting kind of a, uh, I don't know. I got lost in the uh, in the in the possibilities here. Okay, so here's those cows in here again, and uh, let's see, alien abduction one oh one. I forgot when the last alien abduction card I did was. I think it is, I think it's one of the videos on this uh, channel. I'm, it could have been eight years ago or something like that. It could have been one of those really early ones, but I'm pretty sure it's on the channel because I don't think it's on my Flickr gallery, um, you know, which is more of the times when I was just doing still, you know, just, you know, samples as opposed to in video form. Okay, so that see that lighting coming on the top of that cow like that? This cow stamped out a little bit lighter anyways, but let's put some of that lighting on top of some of these little cows like this. Maybe that's a little bit too much right there. I don't know, maybe I should probably use this for those really tiny cows like that. This beam is getting kind of light. Yeah, let's see. Let's let's strengthen this beam a little bit too now. Let's go with a little bit of a stronger center beam like this. Now I think about it, huh? We're going for some beam refinement here. Yeah, it got a little chunky in there, but who cares? It feels like it's kind of like lifting up like that a little bit more. I thought about doing this on the um, this holographic paper that has that um, this thing already in there, but I you know because there's these beams going up like that, but I thought eh, I'm going to be fighting that the whole time in order for the imagery to show. You know what I mean? I just thought it would be too difficult for that um, for anything to show up in there. So I don't know. I went. It's kind of hard to, it's kind of weird considering, um, thinking of this holographic printable vinyl starry sticker, you know, paper as being like conservative, you know what I mean? But in comparison to this one right here, this is like, you know, this is like, I don't know, like tame, you know, it's like nothing uh, compared to this right here. It's just a strange kind of notion. All right, so let's go in with some additional colors on here. And um, I don't know, I'll, I'll see if anything else comes to mind. Like I said, I think um, some stars in here or something like that might be good. But um, let's see if we can add in a little bit of kick, you know, to this scene using some color now. I mean, we have a lot of color in here and I don't wanna make things too colorful down here with greens or anything like that, you know, cause you know, the main thing in here, we already have all these colors in that starry holographic cardstock like that. It's already, you know, we have a really loud element in here, okay? You know, on kids' cards, the whole thing can be really loud. Um, but, you know, I still want emphasis a little bit in some areas like that. Uh, that's the good thing about it. So, Yvonne, you know, I think if, if it's something that a kid would really like... Um, you know, I think that it's kind of working in the opposite direction. Like if a kid would approve of it, I think it would be cool for, um, you know, adults too, <laughs> or the kid and all of us like that. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Let me see. As a hotel employee of 
a higher end sort, I can confirm those banquets still happen. Oh, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Jimmy Doohan. I forgot about it. I used to go to a lot of those conventions, though. Though you know, I saw like Walter Koenig in another uh, convention and whatnot. So there was always something. I don't know how I forgot about that dinner, but it was like came back to me a little bit because I don't think too many people um, took advantage. You know, the, con the comic book conventions back then were way different than now, even way different from like twenty years ago. There weren't that many people going to it. It was like I don't know. First of all, it was like 99.9% .9 guys, you know, in that entire convention hall, because it was all comics, you know. Um, it was all of us, uh, you know, comic book geeks. I, I was a little kid. Well, not that little. I was in high school, but um, uh, I don't know. It was just a different thing. But um, so it wasn't really like a big thing. I watched all the Star Trek shows and everything like that. It was, it was one thing that was really strange about Jimmy Doohan was um, watching him talk, you know, without that accent. <laughs> okay, so I'm adding in some of this blue in here. I'm giving it a little bit of a blue tinge like that, okay? So uh, that was a little bit too much, so I'm just kind of mellowing it out a little bit. You know, as lightly as I'm applying this, it was like, eh, it's a little bit too much here. So I'm just trying to give it a little bit of structure, okay? Well, just a little bit of a tinge of a different color. That's, it's a little bit too much over there. Uh, ideally, what you want to do is you want to utilize some of the colors that are within this space. Actually, there is that kind of lighter blue like that, so you get that little bit of dialogue between that tone and that. So, I don't know. I guess it's okay. But I think the color that I'll be utilizing a lot of in here is black. So I'll put the black over some of that blue so it'll kind of blend it on a little bit more. So remember everyone's homework uh, to do is an alien abduction scenario. Um, you'll be graded on um, Originality, uh, technique, um, uh, spirit. <laughs> Have your rough drafts ready to go for the critique on Monday. I'm trying to think if I want any color in that beam. Probably not. I think I want it just stark like that. I do want some color in this cow down here, though. You know, the cow is this one's large enough to, you know, to receive some color. All right. So I don't know if you guys can see any of that, but there's a little bit of a tinge of uh, blue within this white now. So it's, it's just, you know what I mean? It's a little bit, there's a little bit more character to it, I guess. Let's see. Let's add some of it down in this. Area right down in here. Okay, and let's go. Okay, so in a nighttime scenario, you wouldn't have like colors and things like that, but I, I think it looks interesting to have a little bit of tinge of it. Let's add a lighter tinge of it first. This is, I don't know, maybe this one will stand out even more because it's green or a uh, lime green. But let's just add some of it down just for a little bit of a, a change of hue, okay? Now see down here, if I add too much of it, it's going to really stand out. But remember, we can always add some white over the top of it to really mute, you know, how apparent it ends up looking like after you apply this down. So it'll integrate it a little bit more. And if you don't like what you see, it'll obscure it. So, you know, that's one of the things that's always good for me is, you know, if I don't like something that I do, I just cover it up with white. I don't usually don't cover it up completely, but I obscure a part of it. So it's just not quite as 
kind of upfront and apparent like that, okay? Now this is supposed to be a beam down here too, so I'm not gonna make it like darker on the inside here. It's supposed to be illuminated, so I'm gonna have this kind of darker on the perimeter like this and lighter in the interior, cent or more central area like that, like so, okay? And again, if you haven't done this before, it's really pretty cool that you can apply colored pencil onto this type of paper. See, if I go like this, if you go just directly on the vinyl, you can't really can't see anything at all, first of all, because there's not very much contrast, you know, if you're going with a darker one, but it's just not really sticking to that type of thing. But you've created this foundation of almost like a paper-like surface using that Brilliance ink that's perfectly adhered to it. Look at that. <laughs> capsule up there like uh or that saucer up there it's like reflecting all that light up there i don't know why it's like just the top portion of it is illuminated like that it's all on one thing but it's like cut off right there at the top so maybe if i move that oh, okay maybe that's just where my light was it's like my flying saucer is coming to life If there's any sci-fi fans out there, do you remember that Twilight Zone with that flying saucer in that cabin with that lady living in that cabin and she smashes it up and then it's like, you know, they're going after her with like little laser beams and stuff like that. And then she ends up smashing it up and then we do a close up and it says like USA or something like that, you know? <laughs> But that was kind of like one of these flying saucers. It was one of those like shapes like that from what I remember, you know, typical flying saucer looking thing, like 50s, 60s version of a flying, of a UFO, you know, alien. Okay, this is the black right here. And I have these rocks within the, um, I don't even know where I put my stamp here. Uh, here, so these rocks like this, they are darker on the base of them. See these rocks right there? I bottom light, you know, I top light my objects quite often. So they're, the bottom portions are in shadow. So I'm just going in and reiterating that. Maybe I shouldn't have done that right around the cow's head. But you reiterate um, shadows with inks or colored pencils, you know, um, alcohol ink pens or something like that, and things look a little bit more rounded that way, okay? Going into these uh, clouds like this, you can, you know, we added some of the um, Brilliance Black ink in here, but you can go in a much more targeted way with the, you know, a little bit of a colored pencil too if you want to kind of define some of these clouds a little bit more, like the edges of them. Like this, okay, so it, that cloud just kind of stands out just a touch more by adding in a little bit more contrast behind it. Um, I'll probably add, do it too much where it's a little bit too harsh, but then you just go in and add a little bit of white pigment ink right back in there and make it, you know, a little bit more uh, diffused like that. Or if you wanted to too, I mean, we can darken it around this beam. I, I'm not going to do that though. Or if you want to darken around around the beam or have like this mist of like darker haze in here just to emphasize the beam, one of the things you can do is you can go with the opposite kind of direction like this and you can kind of cover the beam up and then darken the area around here. So you go reverse kind of white on dark um, with the white like that and then you go dark on light. It doesn't have to be black or anything like that. It can just be a, like a 5% haze of the black or something of that sort too. Okay, so uh, enough of that. I don't know. I'm kind of scratching around with that a little bit. Um, some of it, some of it looks okay. Some of it doesn't like that's too harsh right there. What I need to do is I need to take this and I need to flatten off one side of it so I'm using much more of like a side type of application where it's a lot smoother. My pencil right now is getting really stubby, so I'm kind of going on with a harder touch, you know, where kind of like a lighter kind of side 
type of application would be better for that type of looks here. So again, so you just kind of utilize this and just go back and right over the top of it. And again, this white that I'm adding in here is, um, uh, it's translucent, so you, it's not like I can't see any of the white that's on there anymore. I'm not sure why I scratched into that right there a little bit too much, but this will take care of it. I will like so. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot about that cow there. Um, Let's see. Let's go with a little bit of brown on it. Like this here. I'll do it on the kind of the lower bottom side of it too, where the top I want still illuminated, okay? Well, I'll add some of that up here too. Uh, those cows are really distant. But like I said, they're still they still they're still grazing. Maybe the time it took for them to go from right here to there, maybe it was like, you know, like a second or something like that. I don't know. Now, if I were gutsy, I would really create a shadow down here being cast by this cow right down here. Okay, let's go ahead and do it here. Since I already said it, okay. See, this is one I'm not really quite sure how to do or where to put this shadow. Should the shadow be down here? I'm, just, I'm going to put it right here. Okay. Now, the shadow, I'm having casting the shadow down here. It's usually a darker version of whatever colors are down there. So this is, you know, I've kind of created this as a, it's a green surface under this lighting condition right here. Tractor beams are usually like stark white and kind of sterile, but I don't know, maybe it's like this beam right here is more like sunlight where you're getting some colors down here. So it's like, what shape should this shadow be in? I don't know. I'll just make it a little bit more irregular like this. Okay. So go like that. Um... All right, something like that. And then let's go in with uh, a little bit of black in here too, kind of in the center of this shadow. It wouldn't have probably too like super defined of a shadow because there's this huge diffusion of light everywhere too. So let's go like that. And I'll smooth this out with some additional white inks. So something like that. You know what I mean? I don't know. It kind of anchors the uh... shadows give things mass. Okay. So like adding that shadow at the base of those rocks down here, it makes sense that, you know, this cow would be casting a shadow like that. I guess it kind of reinforces the idea of it getting lifted off the ground like that too. This will be on the true and false portion of your test too. So should, you know, um, elevated clouds, um, I mean, elevated cows, um, should they cast a shadow? And then like answer A would be, you know, yes, all, every time. And number two would be, it depends on, you know, the, you know, the, the distance from the ground and the strength of the light beam, you know, like these aren't casting a shadow, right? Because they're too far. Okay. <laughs> it's late, folks. All right, so yeah, I don't know. I think that looked okay. I think that shadow added to it. And plus this area down here was a little bit boring, I guess. So there's a little bit of variation like that. Let's do something here too. Um, uh, let's see. I'm gonna add a little bit more texture across this area right here. Let's take the reeds large and let's go. Eh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, I can't, I don't think I can do the VersaFine because I added too much um, colored pencil down here. 
So across that wax, I think we're going to have to boot, go with stays on here. Yeah, stays on sticks to, you know, practically anything. All right, so a little bit more kind of texture like that. So see, it kind of broke up my shadow. You know, one of those things in right sync stamping. Um, and remember, like what I said, I don't usually obscure something too much, but you know, I mean, the shadow is okay, but I put a little white over the top of it and then I stamp some of this to obscure some of it. So, you know, suddenly that shadow looks a lot better <laughs> because you can't see as much of it, right? All right, so um, let's see. So let's go with uh, some additional bling in here. And I think, well, you know, I think this is about it right there. You know, it, that looks, you know, like a, like a real um, bovine abduction thing going on, you know, right? From all the photographs that we've seen in the past of it happening. Okay, so I don't know if the stars in here are going to, um, you know, be distracting or whatever. I don't think it would be for a kid, though. Uh, okay, let's see. Kay's a big kid. They would like getting a card like this. Um, if you're doing something, you know, you know it'd be cool too. Like another version of this type of thing with glow in the dark, those little uh, star stickers or something like that. Maybe maybe do a bigger piece or something like that. You need you have glow in the dark in here. If you can make some kind of something that's kind of interactive, I think I don't know. Maybe maybe some smaller um, glow stars or something like that too. You know, where some kid. I, I like the idea of some kid kind of. Uh, having some kind of thing. Um, I always had stuff for my kid, you know, where he'd like take it into the closet and stuff. He was never afraid of the dark because some of the, you know, the funnest things, you know, happened, you know, when you take something in the dark to look at it. Um, but little glow in the dark types of elements would be kind of cool. Or this is where, um, you do, um, like if uh, someone, you know, you're giving it to a kid or something like that, or a kid at heart, so, you know, Yvonne or Kay, you know, or whoever, you know, uh, Linda. You know? <laughs> so I would put, you know, you put kind of a little bit obscure, don't make it so apparent, you know, with several dots, but you put someone's initial, you know, in glow in the dark or star form within these little extra elements like this, you know? I don't know, it makes it kind of more personalized like that too, where you're giving it to someone, you know, a card for them. All right, one of the things that I did, um, I did something on this starry thing before and I thought, okay, this is already really loud. So I went with some of my larger crystals on here, but it was like, oh my God, those crystals are like way too big. So it's like, okay. Um, it still kind of looks cool to, you know, where they're a little bit more subtle. Do you do that with a kid for a card? I don't know. Maybe want like a big bling in there, okay? But I guess this is these types of elements like this, if I was even if I was going to give it away um, to someone, I guess this is the part where kind of I'd be doing this for myself, maybe. I wouldn't go too huge, where it would be kind of, you know, as the creator, if, if it's something that's that's too kind of, you know, um, distractive of an element in a bad way, though, I don't want to do. So I'm going to, you know, in other words, I'm going to stay away from, like, you know, that gigantic... You know, I don't know, whatever it is, like centimeter, you know, slice crystal. I have this crystal pack, and uh, I hardly ever use these really large ones up here. Oh, one of those things that I often do is I make some of my stars a little bit more kind of um, glowing. You can put a little bit of this down like this, you know, have, you know, and have like a crystal star that's kind of glowing, which is kind of cool. You got to do it before you, you know, put the crystal down, of course. 
Okay, I can't see my glue dots at all. Here we go. I have to look at this at a at a real angle like this. I can't see my glue. I think a lot of my glue already dried. Oh, no. Okay, it didn't. Or did it? I have to add this in again. Maybe we, maybe we need one um, one of uh, these stars kind of larger. I don't know, maybe two. Okay, I suddenly can't see anymore. I can't get this pin in here. I'm focusing on this um, this super loud cardstock. Okay, let's go with one of these right here. It'll be a uh, you know maybe it's a maybe it's a twinkly planet or something like that. One of my standard replies to someone um, that might mention something. Um, I, I was just joking around with them, though. I wasn't like, you know, like lashing out or something like that. But um, when someone would be saying something, you know, in regards to a scene, like, well, I don't know if you'd have that kind of color there in that situation, you know what I mean, or whatever in that scenario, I'd say, well, um, you know, if it was a lakeside scene or something like that, I'd say, well, I mean, who who said that, uh, you know, that that's, you know, I'm this isn't, you know, that's Earth. You know, it could be on a, another planet. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I've said that for 20 years, but um, that's what I used to say uh, once in a while. But in a joking way, though, okay? Okay, I'm adding more and more of these here. Oh, God, this is the worst thing about um, these little things. I have this um, gem pickup thing, but you still have to have the, uh, the crystals um, right side. Oh, here we go. Let's see. Here we go. Here's my new technique for picking these up. You pick it up like this, and then of course it's right set up, and then you go with your finger like that. Wait, is it still there? Oh, okay, here we go. Okay, I've developed my new technique, uh, but sometimes it's sticking to my finger still though. Okay, so anyways, here we go. I didn't put, I don't know, I didn't really put too many down here. I don't know if you can see that there. I'll show you where I put them, though. Let's see. Um, okay, can you see them like that? At that angle? You can see them a little bit more like that. Okay, but I don't know. I didn't think that they would, like, at, that, at certain angles you can't see them at all, but at other angles you can, like that, or especially in certain types of light, like when it, when you get into that bluish tinge like that, they kind of show up a little bit more, like in the reds and stuff that you don't really see them too. Oh, there we go, like that. There's the blue like that. So they show up a little bit more like that. So it's kind of subtle, but I don't know. There, there. Okay, so anyways, that is the scene here. Um, alien abduction. I took a little, a lot, well, actually, I took a lot more time on this scene than I thought I was going to, because I was just having some fun, you know, with some other types of elements in there. When I start having fun, it's like, okay, I'm going to invest a little bit more time into it than I was originally planning. Oh, gosh, see, that being said, I completely forgot about my white paint pen here. Glad you like it, CM. Uh, let's see. Thank goodness this cow is... Uh, abduct this is a cow abducting aliens instead of a cow yeah cow mutilate mutilate yeah um 
they're not going to mutilate. I, that's one of those things that came up when I was looking up cow abduction. I was thinking they, they there was like cow abductions, right? I was thinking that's not one of those things I'm just kind of making up, right? That's one of those things that they say, you know, is happening out there. Hello, Cheryl. Uh, Glenda, take care of yourself. Okay, let me see. Let me change my exposure here a little bit too. Okay, there we go. You didn't want mini lights for the spaceship too. That would be cool, Kay. If I can have mini lights, that would be awesome. So, I mean, if we did something like this, it'd be cool if, you know, it, it would really be really cool. It, can you imagine like some kind of little LED or something like that, like but blinking lights up there, like, you know, close encounters of the third kind or something like that. That'd be awesome. Okay, so here's the white paint pen like that. Glad you like those details and highlights, Deborah. Uh, I don't know if Linda is Linda uh, buys from still in here, but she went one of her comments on her on the her for the Facebook post was Kevin spends like as much time in the details as he does in the entire stamping and coloring portion of the scene. So, it was like, yeah, you're you're right. Uh, I really like all those little details and uh, little things like that. Um, I don't know, that's where a lot of the interest is for me in pieces. You know, when I see people's pieces, I love the whole, I take a look at the whole thing overall. That's the thing that's going to first grab your attention. But I like when there's like those little elements, you know, oh, there's those stars kind of standing out like that. But the thing is, I, it's those little details that really suck me into a piece. And I guess they um they are the reason for kind of like further inspection you know what i mean like observation or something like that within the space so if you can get something like this the visual path for someone when they just look at this okay they're probably going to look some they're going to look at this beam and their eyes are going to go straight to this. And then the visual path is going to go like that up to the flying saucer. So the visual path is like boom and then up like that. But little elements like this will carry the viewer's eye out here if we have enough reason for them to do so. And then see, I'm adding in these little highlights like this. And granted, these aren't going to be like attention getters. But if they, you know, they might look around like this. And then say, oh, here's all these little sparkly little highlights like this on the trees or something like that, you know. So if we can get them to do something like this and then kind of come around like this a little bit more, you've expanded on that kind of visual path for someone. Um, like in triplicate or something like that, you know, you it's they might do something like this and then just go like zzzz. And then look at this again like that. This will be the kind of the visual landing part. They'll be going back and forth like this. But if you can get them kind of, you know, their attention on those little things like that afterwards, it could be one of those things that, you know, it's like one of those really good movies. If you watch a movie, you, you can kind of pick up on different things that with each repeated viewing, that's really good. So on a card like this, if you can get them kind of looking around at different things and noticing different things, that you've added in for them, or you've added it in for yourself. Um, it's like bonus points, bonus visual points like that. In the world of like illustration too, um, you know, when someone's kind of like flipping around in a page or in these days, you know, on the internet or something like that, if you can get someone to kind of just stop and, you know, kind of look at the piece for an extra few seconds, that's like, you know, that's like, really, that's like, you know, there's a lot of success in that, you know, these days it's like, you know, it's like the, the, the attention span shorter and shorter and shorter. So if you can get them just to, you know, kind of, you know, look at something just a little bit longer um, through these types of things like that, or ourselves, you know, if we're keeping this for ourselves, then you're adding these little types of elements in, you know, for your own repeated viewing. Or if they're the types of things that you like seeing, you can kind of go and relive, you know, kind of whatever the experience. That's what it is for me in theory, I guess, you know. 
Okay, so on these little um, rocks down here, if we've shaded the bottom side of it with a colored pencil, then you can illuminate the top portions of it, and those can be a little bit more rounded and three-dimensional looking like that. I'm glad I added in that shadow down there. Okay, and these trees, I don't, sometimes I go a little bit overboard with this um, highlighting type of uh, exercise, but uh, a little bit of highlights on the side of the tree facing the light. You know, this is like a really bright light. It takes a bright light to uh, to transport a cow, right? Isn't that what they? Isn't that what the saying is? <laughs> I think, or is it the brightest light gets the cow? I think they say. Okay, so there's that. I put some light on the sides of the tree, facing light. So left side illumination on that pine tree right there right side illumination on the left side trees i mean it's just subtle again you know see, but see this little light like down there you know it kind of captures it a little bit you don't want to put too much as well as it looks like you know it's like you know you're everything's like crawling with little i don't know whatever phosphorescent like bugs or something like that. And you can put additional stars up here if you want to. You know, they'll get kind of obscured, but um, like at an angle like this, you know, where I don't get um, a lot of that holographic, those holographic touches really showing too much, then you can add this in there. In that scenario lighting scenario so like that so see i get a little bit of extra let's see let's go even more all right so you see those little stars in there and I, here it's like man i gotta add in more and more here Okay, so there's a little bit of stars showing up in here, okay? So, people, it, it can look nice and rich just like that, too, in addition to, you know, when it gets more crazy like that. God, that is so insane, that paper. So you can't see the little white dots at all like that, right, at that angle, but you've added something in the event that someone's just looking at it like that, or first impressions, you know, first impressions you want there to be, you know, something kind of exciting and rich and whatnot. And then, you know, it goes like this. This is what I like about this paper too. You know, we don't have blinking LED lights in here or something like that, but just the simple, you know, process of active, uh, you know, changing something by like a quarter inch or something like that. It just, or an inch or whatever, it just completely changes the spirit of the piece and it brings it alive, brings it to life. Look at this too with that um, UFO. It's black right there and that light like that, right? But then it's, see, it's like capturing some of that light. See, I kind of toned a little bit of it. So it's a little bit different at different angles too. So the UFO kind of, you know, changes, you know, from light to dark as well, depending on the light, I don't know. It's a little bit extreme like that. There's a colorful UFO like that, like at that angle. I know it's reflecting. Oh, I have a post-it note on my uh, board like that, but I don't know, cards for kids. Uh, let me see, what time is it on this one right here? Oh, it's a two hour card. No, we're not giving this card away to some little kid. <laughs> Do a quarter page one or something like that. Mass produce that little UFO. The UFO took a while. It's like, ah, I'm not going to get this. This card, you know, this, this video is, uh, this has been a two hour stream now, you know. I'm going to give this card to someone that, uh, you know, 
uh, stamps or something like that. <laughs> I'm joking here, you know, but uh, I don't know. Something like that would be really fun. I, I'll, I'll, I, I can do a quick card. Usually when I do something like this, I'll do a quick card example of this type of scene like this. This would be really cool too, you know, with like like a couple extra beams coming out, like that's a little bit more um, transparent too, or you can have another beam going out that way, or, you know? I think that would be kind of cool too, rather than this singular strong beam, or I can have, you know, a wider one, but having it a little bit lighter, like I do with um, light beams, like running through trees, like crepuscular. Um, rays like that. I think that would be cool on this one because this is a little bit bare out here. I mean, it emphasizes the strength of this beam too. So if I kind of put another wider part of it like that, maybe it would weaken it a little bit. I don't know. It might make it richer looking though. I'm not sure. Let's see. Three to ten. You've got to be kidding. What a waste. They would never appreciate. Not anymore, Deborah, huh? Yeah, that's what I was thinking here. Deborah already kind of uh, tuned into that part portion of it. We'll we'll come up with like a like a five minute uh, uh, quick card version of this one for it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, Jesse Jesse Stone, no relation to. I had a a teacher by the name of Craig Cree Stone. He was my. Um, instructor for three dimensional does was it, what, what what class was that was that i think it was 3d design or something like that and he was a sculptor in fact i just wrote to him i found his website and i just wrote to him i just said hey i had your class you know a gazillion years ago just saying hi really enjoyed the class teachers appreciate that when you do that um but yeah he wrote back let's see uh, the pencil doesn't scratch off the brilliant. It doesn't do that, Linda. It's shocking. That brilliance really sticks to that um, surface like that. Let me see something here. Yeah. Okay. So that's about the that's about the tone of that card. Let me see if I can change my. Yeah, it's a little bit better there. I just changed my camera exposure, kind of a little bit more. It's a little bit lighter than what it looks like on screen right here. But uh, let's see. Yeah, Linda, you can use those colored pencils on here. I'm not sure if all colored pencils work on here just equally. Um, if any of you know any, I don't know, do people, does anyone here have like two or three different brands of colored pencils that you've used? Are the Prismacolors the softest ones out there? That's, what, that, that's the thing that I kind of got when I put some inquiries out there on colored pencils when I started using them a little bit more. Some people started asking me questions about colored pencils, so I did a little bit of research, and I went on these um, colored pencil boards, um, like news boards or whatever, uh, and I asked about um, the different um, kind of qualities between the different brands and the thing that I got from it was it seemed like color, uh, Prisma colors were the softest ones, which probably would be the most conducive, but I don't know, this Brilliant Sync on this printable vinyl is, it's pretty rugged. I haven't had any lifting at all of that Brilliant Sync off of that type of vinyl, at least when it comes to the, uh, the colored pencils. It's not scratching it at all. Of course, it's the complete opposite if you're doing that Brilliant Sync on foil cardstock, okay, then it's really, um, you know, it'll scratch it right off. I mean, just putting your finger down on it will remove the uh, the brilliant sink on, on those foils like that. I forgot about, let's see, let's put um, highlights on the top of that cow head right there. Okay, so don't forget the... Uh, The highlights, uh, the bovine highlights in the uh, in the scenario of abduction. Um, sometimes that comes up on that extra credit uh, question on your tests coming up. <laughs> oh, let's see. This almost reminds me of a lot of stamping that was done back in the day. Oh. Uh, 
it, that that's a really good point, Yvonne. You saw much more of this type of kind of funky scenario in Rubber Stamp Madness back in the day. There was a lot more of that going on um, back then. It was a different group of, uh, you know, or there was a wider... Well, maybe it wasn't wider. Maybe there was more of that type of thing going on. And then there was this thing. This was considered like... I don't know if this one would be considered because it's all out of this. Yeah, I mean, the thing that... If I had these cows on the ground and that UFO was out of there, but those types of scenarios, there was this whole kind of running dialogue between, um, or articles even, of, they call it cute versus weird, you know? And there might have been, I don't know, doing something like that, I think it was kind of being divisive and kind of creating this kind of thing, you know, within, you know, the stamping, I don't know, world or whatever, but... Um, there was that whole kind of running article, and I think it ran for several issues. Um, um, but yeah, this would be probably you know this would be this would be uh, definitely on the cute end of things. <laughs> I'm joking; it'd be on the weird, you know, right here in terms of the subject matter. You saw a lot more of those types of things going on. People combining things. I think we start doing a lot of more weird, uh, huh, Linda? With the you know with the uh, if anyone else of you have done like the. Uh, the the monster maps you know it really got people kind of using things you know so like linda just did an entire 11 by 17 um piece where uh you know anything that had a head um now in her scene they had no heads <laughs> this would be a great rubber stamp madness cover it's for the the ufo UFO, National UFO Day, National um, Bovine Abduction Month, you know. Uh, we'll, we'll enter it for that one right here. This would have to be much larger uh, for Rubber Stamp Madness. Um, yeah, that'd be fun. I guess if we did that, if it was a Rubber Stamp Madness um, cover, we'd have to have a lot more, uh, maybe some more things kind of getting sucked up or something like that. I don't know, but this is effective, huh? With just like two or three like that. I wasn't sure if this one looked too stiff. I mean, you know, the legs should be a little bit more dangling or something like that. If I was doing it for Rubber Stamp Madness, I would probably stamp it without that leg and I would kind of angle that leg down where, you know what I mean? Where it's like hanging a little bit more or something like that. Uh, was, the, that w was that the Twilight Zone with Agnes Moorhead? I might have been, Deborah. Man, you're good if that's the one. It was that that was a Twilight Zone that I hardly ever saw. I saw it on the Twilight Zone Marathon, I think, for the first time. But it wasn't in that I don't know, our station was KTTV, I think, that showed um Twilight Zones like every day, like at noon or whatever it was. Um but I think I saw it in a Twilight Zone um marathon one time. But I've seen it several times since then. Um, as a little kid, it was like, you know, it was kind of scary, you know, War of the Worlds, seeing that, seeing the remake more often than I've seen the original one, but we started watching that original one not too long ago. Um, let's see, uh, starting to question your expertise on alien abduction now with you're not sure of shadows. <laughs> Uh, let's see, Linda said, some mica powders can look good on the white inked areas. Oh, that would look great. How would you adhere, how do you adhere the mica powders? Um, do you just lay down, let's see, with or without water? I rub old eyeshadows on with an applicator. Huh, try it, interesting. I don't have any mica powders at all. Do they come in different grits or something like that? Or are they all the same, you know, kind of, whatever granule size or whatever do you think kevin would waste his eyeshadow <laughs> on stamping linda um hey k you know that eyeshadow of mine what i always say the the philosophy is anything for the card right <laughs> anything for the card i always used to say that for when uh when we were out uh with a bunch of friends you know and taking pictures it was like okay hey go out to that ledge out there you know what i mean and my uh my saying was anything for the shot you know 
which I was creating this scene. Thanks so much, Deborah. I'd love to be able to do something that awesome. It was really fun. Uh, doing this on just regular cardstock too, I mean, that's it's easy to do. On this one, you know, I'm having to work um, with the printable vinyl, of course, a little bit, you know, in terms of um, the Brilliance Ink applications. But uh, I, I think on my first um, kind of bovine abduction thing. I didn't have like an official saucer in there. I just had the lighting, you know, cause it's, you know, on a quarter page piece of cardstock. So it's like this small. And I think I used the meadow in there. So I think I just had a beam coming from, um, outside of the page down. I think I had one cow or something like that, probably in the air or something of that sort. So that was fun. But, you know, speaking of, you know, doing something for a kid or whatever, you know, something like that would be really fun. And and if you really wanted to, it, let's see, if I was, okay, so another type of thing, you know, when we're thinking about cards for kids, it's like, if I was to do this card with kids, I would probably have maybe like some kind of flying saucer, or maybe they would draw the flying saucer out like that. And then I would have a beam, I would just have a white piece of paper be the beam that they glue down. And then they glue their flying saucer that they've cut out right on top there and then they stamp their you know their cow into the you know the beam like that and that would be really fun as far as a kid's project like if I was doing something I was always putting together um, some sort of scenario where they're going to be doing something like this I would probably do some sort of cutout beam or something like that that they can just glue down like that you know because you know you wouldn't be doing like a bunch of that brilliance ink applications like that um, with kids that young uh, maybe the 10 year olds or something like that, but that, definitely not the, uh, the younger ones like that. So, um, it might be hard to find the glue dots. Uh, what was that in reference to? <laughs> oh, and up top there, Linda said, watch out when he reads that. Hey, you know, I've heard it all in stamping. Uh, let's see. Uh, you can see them there. Nice addition. Um, yeah, okay, for me, it's all about the details, you know? I mean, not only, but in terms of that extra kind of um, um, attention, you know, in, in really anything. I look, at, I always look at the details and things like that with pieces. I enjoy things if they don't have like a lot of details in it or whatever, you know, if it has like initial impact, you know? I mean, I guess that's really the most important thing because if people don't, you know, if you can't get people's attention kind of on an immediate basis like that, but I want that little bit of extra thing, you know, going on, you know, you can hide little things in there. In, in this case, in a very subtle way, when we were doing those monster maps and, you know, we're working on these gigantic 11 by 17 pieces, you know, it was open season on adding tons of different things going on all over the scene because we tried to pack them, f you know, as full of information as we can. But when it's something like this and, it's, you know, really small, you know, it's little things like those little crystals or something like that. Or, you know, if you're doing a scene where it didn't have like so much busyness and you added one star up there or something like that, you know, that would get a lot of attention especially if you had like a little glowing little star like that. Um, that would be really fun to do. And I don't know, we can still have some glowing stars up here. I'm starting to look at that. But um, let's see here. Hello, Annie. <laughs> Annie, what time is it there for you? Oh, I guess it's, you know, it's not extraordinary, extraordinarily late. Annie is a, Annie's a late uh, sleeper. When Annie was in the classes, she says, hey, just, you know, don't have like a, like a, you know, it's like a super early morning class, but anything outside of that will work. So nighttime type of scenario right here, for, you know, Annie, for you right there. Uh, Annie, uh, Annie took the, um, the light beam class too. So uh, we didn't go into, um, you know, the light beams, crepuscular rays coming from a flying saucer, but... Uh, you know, why not? It'd be cool, you know, with some, like, some smaller flying saucer. If you're doing a larger one, you know, it'd be really cool. Um, 
let's say you did like a couple flying saucers in a couple different sizes and the one in the background had the smaller one, you know, cows going up. And then you have a larger one right here with the larger cow going up. And then if anyone had like a really big cow or something like that, maybe you have a, a beam coming in, you know, from the side, you know, taking up the, uh, you know, a larger cow. Maybe you'd have like, have it coming in from the edge or something like that. It doesn't have to be the whole cow or something like that, but that'd be kind of cool. Because I was thinking, you know, some kind of smaller kind of thing in the background. Maybe you have the beam a little bit less, you know, strong in terms of your, your white in there. Linda Beist, uh, when does that come from? I don't know where it comes from. Um, I don't know. I see like these stories on, uh, you know, cow abductions, like, you know, all the time. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know, it's, it's like we said, you know, we used to see these types of things being in like, you know, maybe not this scene right here, but these types of scene in Rubber Stamp Madness way back in the day. There was a lot of that stuff going on there like that. Okay, Yvonne, okay, has many sets of colored pencils from the low end to the very high end. Polychromos are really soft. Not sure if the soft has got it. Yeah, polychromos. Okay, those are colored pencils. There's not the, um, the, the, the sticks um, or whatever. But yeah, Yvonne, I don't know. You can tell us which ones are... You know, are which ones are the softest? I guess I should ask. I find that the softest, I'm guessing the softest ones in theory would be the most universal because you can use them on smoother surfaces, right? As well as the kind of more softer textured surfaces, I'm guessing. Because the harder ones, you know, uh, could potentially scratch off. I don't know. You know, that's what I'm guessing. So. Back when I was back when I bought my set of Prisma colors, there were only like two different brands I think of colored pencils out there. Um, there might have been some other sets for kids, but as far as like you know going to an art store or something like that, there was um, Prisma color, and then there were um, I don't know I don't know what they were. It was like one of those art brands, Winsor Newton or something like that. It wasn't Winsor Newton, but it was one of those brands like that that had those other colored pencils. I don't think it was the. Uh, uh, I got another set around here somewhere, but um, I don't even think it was the one that I got like 20 years ago. Oh, I don't know. I don't think it was design. I don't think it was specter color. I think specter colors. I don't know. I don't know when these ones came out. I haven't even used this set. This foam right here is like disintegrating right here, and it's like attached to the uh, the pencils down here, but. I don't know if they, they make these ones anymore, but um, I, don't, I don't even remember where I got them. I won a set one time from um, an art store that had just moved and they were having a grand opening. I, I don't know, I just, he gave me a little thing and I happened to win something. I thought it was, it was a set of something. So yeah, but yeah, uh, so the polychromos there. So everyone keep that in mind there in terms of, um, I don't know, whatever, if they're really soft, I think they're going to be a lot more usable on a variety of surfaces like that, you know, on ones. You might be able to use them on just about any type of cardstock, you know, but probably the, the smoother the cardstock and the more sealed off it is, the less probably, tran you know, the transferable um, wax, hard of the wax, you know, you probably won't be able to transfer onto that as quite as much, maybe, I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Directional light. In terms of directional light, this is a definitely, um, there's a definitely a strong light source in this one here, De Deborah. <laughs> Eye shaws are very fine. Eye shaws. Try it with a tiny bit of water or rub on dry. Huh. 1138, uh, 1136 in Calgary, Alberta. That is, why is it only that time? I would have thought you were like a couple hours ahead of us, Yvonne. Huh. 
glitter shadow would be pretty, especially in smoke color in the clouds. That's your homework there, Kay. Do We want you to apply that and post it somewhere where we can see that. Lyra Polycolor lays it down really nice. Now, are some of these the watercolor pencils too, or are they colored pencils? Because that's another thing too. I think some people like to use, I haven't heard them mention anything, but I knew someone that used um, like colored pencil applications on, I don't know if it was on all of her scenes, but she kind of, it was someone that it was a Samscape studio. I haven't talked to them in probably 10, 15 years, but um, they found a technique that they really liked a lot. They would apply tones down with um, stipple brushes with their inks, okay? So she would apply those light shades like that, and then she would go over them, I think, over the top of that ink with um, colored pencils, but she liked using watercolor pencils because she can, but she wouldn't use them for the watercolor aspect of it. She just found them to be softer. So, um, yeah. Uh, 11, 140, yeah, 141 in Michigan. I would have thought that that was what the time was in like Alberta. Oh. Okay, let's see. Time here. Yeah, 137 in, uh, Annie, are you in Florida? I forgot where you are. Daylight saving time should be coming soon. I don't like that idea here. I think they're, I think that we voted to just keep daylight savings going year round in California, but then they decided, oh, we're just gonna keep it. <laughs> Excellent eraser for colored pencils, interesting. So that's with any type of colored pencils. What would that eraser entail to remove wax would it be is it a colored pencil eraser is it with just their standard statler mars style of white eraser that they have that everyone like carves into um but those yeah those erasers are excellent i didn't know they erased like colored pencils though 943 in alaska awesome Well, Annie, were you far enough away from Ian? I don't know. Can you be any? Can you be far away from you know that hurricane anywhere there? I have a ex um, instructor, professor, illustration. My illustration kind of mentor, professor, lives in Florida, and he said like he, you know he was in Venice, and you know some areas got just completely wiped out, just like a mile from them, you know. So it was just real random there. Okay, you're in, uh, we are both in the same time zone here. A colored pencil eraser, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. There's all kinds of things out there that I'm kind of un unaware of, you know, in terms of uh, um, media out there these days. I'm real careful what I say about media because inks and everything like that, I can't say anything real definitively because like I used to, you know, but these days there's so much different media out there and a lot of it just I have never even heard of, much less own, you know? So, I don't know, even all the inks out there. I think there's less inks being developed these days, different types of inks in the crafting industry just because all the stores are gone. So it's really hard for a manufacturer to come up with, you know, it's just something like, I don't think, you know, Sukuneko is gonna come up with just like, like, like a brand new style of ink, you know? So they might come up with the different colors or something like that, but um, I don't know. I don't see, I don't know, is Ranger still, like Tim Holtz is coming out with different lines or maybe just different colors or something like that. But um, I don't know. I just hope that we retain all of the existing media that's still around these days. I hope it's just still out there. Like like I said, like the Brilliant Sinks. I don't know, maybe Hero Arts, you know, Hero Arts would be the one of those types of companies where I wouldn't be too surprised if they came out with like a, like a mica, I mean, like a, maybe these have already been out there, like a mica type of, or like an iridescent type of, um, you know, pigment ink or something like holographic pigment ink. Does that already exist? Now that I'm saying that, I was thinking maybe something like that already existed out there and I completely forgot about it or 
Um, maybe those were the uh, the embossing powders that I'm thinking about that, you know, where you heat it up or something like that. And then they, they gave you that kind of uh, holographic look or whatnot. But um, I don't know. Yeah. Boise, Idaho. I taught there at Got stamps i i I don't don't know if it was got stamps with a question mark but um the owner of got stamps um i asked him about the name and they said well it's just a kind of a thing on um got milk you know because her uh, they were dairy farmers and uh they had you know the wife started a store or something you know out there in uh, boise um a lot of great you know a lot of stamping done uh, not a huge amount of stores over, you know, back in those days like that, but um, a really, you know, great stamping crowd out there. I, there might have been a s- convention out there in Boise once or twice or, I don't know, something like that. I, I seem to recall, and I don't think it would, it might have been with one of the regular um, cor- uh, promoters, Heirloom or something like that. I haven't tried gelatos yet, Alinda. Um, I completely forgot about those now that I think about it, but I seem to recall thinking that I need to get some of those. Okay, so I need to get some gelatos. I need to get some oxides. I haven't even used oxides at all yet. Okay, and I've seen some really great um, pieces using things like oxides. I don't remember seeing a lot of gelato pieces, or it's just that people haven't mentioned, okay, this is a piece done with, you know, gelato um, inks or whatnot. Oh, Annie, sorry to hear it there. Oh my God. 24 inches of water. Can you imagine that? I'm seeing these flooding floods going on so many places all over the world. I don't know. They keep coming up on my YouTube feed because it's like, I keep watching them. I'm watching them just astounded, you know, Mississippi. I've never been to Mississippi, Paula. I, I think that was one of those states where I was thinking I have rarely sent like in 20 years back when I was thinking I hardly ever send like any like catalogs. I was trying to think of the states that I hadn't sent like a cat. I hadn't had a catalog re- back when I had a hard copy catalog, um, whatnot. But uh, yeah, Mississippi. I've always wanted to travel down in some of those areas, but I just never got around to it. 1614. SA, I mean, South Australia, for those that don't know. <laughs> when I, when you first said, uh, I, 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 I didn't know where that, I, the, the city didn't come to mind immediately. So it's like when I saw that SA, I was so used to um, people referring to South Africa, like my clients as SA. So that's, that's the first thing I thought of back, you know, you know, whatever, when, whenever you posted that the first time that came to mind. Okay, so Sam August, colored pencils have been around like, I, I've never heard of those ones like that. So those ones have been around like from whatever, the 70s, 80s, huh? Or earlier, maybe. A sand eraser is used a lot to erase colored pencils. A sand eraser... God, I'm, th- I'm trying to think if I've, I remember that. Um, in art, I can't remember a sand eraser. I'm trying to think of that right now. I'm thinking of a sand. We had these like pumice things and stuff like that to sharpen things with. Interesting. Yeah, I hope your kids, you know, I wish them the best with that. Flooding's bad like that. I was thinking, my gosh, I, I was thinking when I see these like construction, there's this construction called rammed earth that um, uh, a fellow stamper of ours um, that moved up to British Columbia, um, they got into the sand, um, uh, um, rammed earth style of building construction. But whenever I look at that, all these things going on with all these floods and things like that, that rammed earth kind of thing keeps popping up in my head thinking, man, they got to go with that rammed earth style of construction, you know, because even if something floods out, it's not going to just, you know, they can rebuild easily and it's not going to destroy a bunch of like drywall and that wood construction. I think it would stand up against something like that. Hello, Kathy. 
bovine cow abductions, you know what I mean, um, uh, should be in everyone's repertoire of uh, scenic stamping. <laughs> <coughs> Linda says, eyeshadows, Kevin. Oh, okay. I don't know those things. Distress oxides blend well easily. I love the distress oxide looks and the intensity of the colors that I've seen at times from different examples. And then especially like that water reactive type of thing where they're kind of spraying into it, you know, getting those um, different types of textures and whatnot. I would really utilize it for that, I think, initially to get those different types of things and splatter painting into it with the water, which I've done with inks before on glossy cardstock. But of course, with the oxides, you know, they're tailor made for that type of thing. So I think I'd really like to try that type of thing out and then splatter paint over it with, you know, white paint on there to create some additional stars. So, um, yeah. Oh, oh, so Kathy, so you're just looking at this scene right here, but this is what this kind of looks like on that starry paper like this too, you know, with that, um, the different angles on there, really bringing it to life. God, I really love how this paper like this, I never would have thought to use paper like this that's so loud, but I mean, that is really fun, you know, so we're just looking at it like that. I mean, it just looks, you know, kind of interesting, I guess, with that thing, but then you just change that angle like that. I, I don't know of any other way other than like the holographics to have a stationary card like this or elements, right? I mean, we don't have anything physically moving in this, like a shaker card or something like that, right? Or a pop-up card, but this is something, this is movement within a piece like that without any moving parts. So holographics and whatnot, I guess light reactive um, types of uh, surfaces to, to stamp on like that. Look, oh, look at this. We got a little bit of that um, glittery light down there. That's kind of neat though, huh? You know, it kind of adds to that whole kind of thing. You know, there could be like a little bit of a this little glittery. Oh, so you guys are talking about that glittery type of thing. So we have that little bit of that glittery thing and we're talking about it in the clouds like that. But uh, did what do you now? What, you, you guys probably mentioned it to put it in the beam itself, you know, to have this kind of little bit of a iridescent kind of reflective type of thing going up here it would be kind of cool you know we have these little sparkly bits or maybe you know maybe we what we should have done was we have these little stars out here these little crystals but you put them within the beam eh, maybe it would, maybe that look awkward huh i think about it or maybe you can add in like these little glittery types of things in here but then you put some little bit of white over it to kind of mute it out a little bit so you have these little things kind of you know within that tractor beam like that, but anyways, there's that right there. A little bit more interesting with a little bit more of an angle on there, showing that in there like that. Um, Annie, yeah, my heart breaks for those people in Florida too, you know. It's just, I saw that and I'm thinking, not just the destruction, but I was thinking, how, or how do you rebuild and something like that if that's going to keep going on there like that? you know, keep happening, you know, potentially, you know, unless, you know, like I said, you know, with like stronger construction, I was thinking out in California, it's really, you know, there's, there's, it's really hard to get, um, kind of fire, uh, homeowners insurance in some areas like us, you know, we have open space right across the street and, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know of anyone that's going to get any kind of coverage out there. They, they say they don't cover like flood insurance and take, but who's going to offer flood insurance in Florida? You know, um, I don't know. It seems crazy. I do miss catalogs too. Um, the one thing about the catalogs, um, it's, it's, I, w I wanted to make some kind of downloadable one, like a PDF that someone can print out at their home so they can ha hold it in their hand. But it was the thing, you know, back in the day, you used to send out catalogs to, you know, there used to be whatever, a bunch of different stores out there. So you'd send out 200 catalogs to um, all of your clients or whatever, active clients, every time you had a new catalog. And then there were a lot more conventions. So you went to conventions all the time. So you're constantly giving out these catalogs like that. These days, it's a lot of mail order direct to consumer. 
And then the minimum order for catalogs, if you get them professionally printed up, it's like, if you have a, like a thousand catalogs, that's like a really short run for like offset printing. They have digital printing these days, but it's just a huge price point per book at that low amount. So we used to have catalogs printed up like in the 10,000 or something like that, which cut down the price per book. It might cut it down from like one a run of 1,000 to 10,000. The price per book might have went down as much as like 75% or something like that. So, and you'd have those sitting around for a while, but then you would just add on supplements to that, you know, so... But I, I do miss them. One of the things that I messed up a few years ago is I knew someone from that stamped in those 90s, you know, they were on the Yahoo rubber stamp chat group and everything like that. And they had moved or something like that. But they came across their um, a, a filing cabinet and they had all their old catalogs in there. And uh, I think they mentioned it on Facebook or something like that. And I said, hey, you know, you got to send them out to me. And then I didn't, I wasn't logging on to Facebook every day. And she's, and then that later on, she wrote, Hey, Kevin, um, if you really want these, let me know. Um, and, uh, I didn't write back and then she had recycled them, but I would have liked to have had those because she had probably the catalogs from every company out there. Um, especially if they went to, uh, shows and there used to be 50 different companies at conventions and oftentimes they had their, Books, but I would have liked to have those catalogs, at least temporarily, to show them in a video, like in my um, show and tell videos, where I just flip through catalogs by these companies that are no longer around, you know, just so that there's some kind of record of them, because we don't have records of a lot of these companies at all um, out there. There's just no information on stores and companies around. Like, even the biggest rubber stamp store. Uh, not in terms of square footage or anything like that, but probably that had the most amount of inventory as far as like stamps went, not accessories and all that, but it was with um, Stampa Barbara. I don't know how many, he must have had a million dollars in inventory between his three stores. They were huge, okay? And there is one photograph on the internet, but just stuff like that. I wish we had some more kind of record of a lot of these uh, different companies that are just, like I said, no longer around. I don't know if any of you guys have that, you know, it'd be cool to take a, at least a, co a photograph of the cover. And if you're doing any kind of social media at all, um, just to post it up there, you know, by these um, companies, I'd like to see it. There's, there's the, where are they, where are, uh, where are they now company uh, listing on rubber stamp madness, but it's just a, you know, um, a text, type of uh, thing, you know, where this company was absorbed by this company or this company went out of business or something like that. But we don't really have a kind of the gist of what that company was around that we can kind of get the feeling of by looking at maybe the cover of a, of a, you know, catalog or whatever. Let's see, Kathy asked, let's see, what about the spaceship? Kathy, did you ask, uh, are you asking about this spaceship right here? I'm sorry, let's see, I forgot what we were saying here. We are talking about the, uh, like, floods and stuff, so I was thinking, yeah, we needed a, a spaceship to take everyone to safety there. The spaceship was just, I just cut it out of a piece of uh, silver cardstock like this. I just drew a spaceship and then just uh, cut it out of silver cardstock. I, I, did, I put it on silver cardstock just to make it a little bit more interesting. We we're talking about that mo old movie when um, the day the earth stood still. I think it was like a, it was a black and white movie, but I, I think it it looked, it looked like it would have been like a piece of I don't know like stainless steel or something like that spaceship. So that's what I was thinking when I was doing this one. I wanted it to look like an old fashioned depiction of a, you know, of a bovine abduction. <laughs> Yeah. So that's where that came from. If that's what you were asking, Kathy, I'm sorry. The Distress Woodless pencils are pretty smooth. Okay, are they soft? Any cell understanding? Hurricane Katrina. All those different hurricanes down there, gosh. I'm knocking on wood. We haven't had like a big earthquake here in California in a while. 
mono a mono mono eraser tombo huh interesting it moves some of the paper along with the pencil color oh, okay i see it's like sanding something off then huh thanks linda good night to you or good uh good uh, good day Yeah, Annie, hope you guys have a nice reprieve from that, you know, in terms of the, re you know, I say recovery, but gosh, some of those areas in there, I was looking at some of those things, the, uh, the, the infrastructure, the civic theaters and things like that, you know, where my uh, teacher lives in Venice, it's like, and they said, you know, that theater is like destroyed. gelatos I need to get some of those gelatos I need to write some of this down see how you still have your stampscapes catalog too awesome I forgot which catalog I have like I kept one copy of each of my catalogs I think catalog one was just um I had that run at Kinko's I was telling my son I used to go I was I spent so many hours um, at Kinko's copies and I would go to those Kinko's copies um, that were open like 24 hours a day. I would go in there oftentimes at midnight. So instead of stamping like this, I'd be over at Kinko's, you know, because there weren't any crowds back then, you know, and lines like that. And I'd often kind of get to know like the night manager or something like that, you know, and I'd be able to get them to tweak things i'd say hey can you turn up the contrast a little bit of that you know on this one or whatnot you know and they would do it you know so it was really cool and i'd be getting colored laser copies of scenes or whatnot to send out to stores you know to put up for their displays i would get colored laser copies and i would laminate i was forever laminating back then sending out samples to stores that they can you know put on display alongside the stamps so yeah Yeah, Kathy. Yeah, the conventions were great. Um, you know, they're different now. There's a lot less manufacturers, a lot less infrastructure. But um, I'm going to be going to, if anyone's in Arizona that happens to be watching, I'll be going to the Mesa, Arizona show just in a few weeks here. I need to put um, that out there on, a, on a, I don't know, the Facebook page and mailing list or whatnot. But um I do the shows with uh, the company that makes all of my rubber stamps. Um, he presses my rubber. I, I outsource all that vulcanizing of the rubber. Vulcanizing, not, you know, speaking of Star Trek and stuff like that, but that's what they call the pressing of the rubber that, you know, um, whatnot. But, um, but he said that he's probably going to be wrapping up his convention circuit, so I, w I probably won't be doing any more conventions if he isn't. Okay, so the, the only ones what we were the only ones we were doing were the ones that were we can drive to, which were Carson, which I don't think the Carson convention is going to get going on anymore. But um, but we drive out to uh, Mesa, which is like a I don't know probably three and a half hour drive from uh, Southern California or so. Uh, you have a spaceship stamp, Kevin? Oh, I do. Uh, are you talking about on the space sheet like that? It's the it's more of that like Voyager satellite though, aren't you referring to? Do I have a do I have a like a flying saucer? I don't even remember. Let's see, Linda, you had an earthquake, three point four. Wow, huh? I don't, I I don't, huh. I need to look at my spaceships, I guess. Uh, uh, Linda. Unless you're talking about, do I have a spaceship that I own from a different company? That's what I was wondering. I was wondering if I have that. I think I have like a robot too, um, like an alien robot or something like that. Oh, I, mean, I, I still have uh, number five. I forgot which one of those catalogs of mine. I wrote a bunch of little storylines in it. And that was the one of the most fun times I had um, in terms of the catalog production. <laughs> I just, at the end of the night, I would sit down when my, I don't know, my brain was on like creative mode and I would uh, write these little kind of blurbs for a lot of the different um, stamps and whatnot, which was really fun. Uh, store samples. Oh, Yvonne, you had the st uh, small pile. Awesome. 
Well, that was, uh, I don't know if it was the, um, we would be sending out some of the, the idea cards like that too. And then I'd be doing a lot of the um, like eight and a half by 11 types of uh, things. I think that we did um, 11 by 17s too. That was one of those things that was hard finding the 11 by 17 um, style laminating pouches. I think there were 12 by 18s then, those laminating pouches. But um, I don't know, God, finding out, how do we find all that stuff pre-internet, you know? You know, those specialized types of things like that. Kinko's, yeah, they closed your, yeah, Kinko's now the FedEx store. We still have a Kinko uh, FedEx store near us now, but God, Kinko's at one time, they were so busy. Everyone in there, students getting uh, copies printed off. It was so crazy. A lot of people move out of California every time there's a big earthquake, Paula. Yeah, those, uh, those ones really freak people out. Especially haven't if you haven't been in them before, and uh, yeah, they could be pretty scary. Especially and if any of them lasts like over like fifteen seconds or so, um, yeah, pretty crazy. Uh, it looks like a spaceship to me, but I can't find it on the website anymore. Your space set, I own it in any event. Uh, I'm trying to remember the spaceship, Linda. God. It would be it would be one of my designs from a stamp of the hand. I had like 500 designs from a stamp of the hand company. Not all of them are in production, you know, but I did those few sets like the, you know, like the dragon kites or something like that. And uh, like the New Year's, New Year's Eve celebrate, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. But uh, I don't know. I don't remember a flying saucer, though. I'm not sure. But anyway, all right. Uh, I guess we'll call this a night here or whatever time it is for you guys, wherever you're at. Um, I had a lot of fun with this one right here. I don't know if it looks like night, you know, the only thing that looks like night is that starry part like that. I think this would be kind of, you know, if I were to do it again, maybe I'd go a little bit darker or something like that. But I, I mean, I like the way that this one turned out. This is the first time, you know, first time I've done like an alien abduction on the starry, you know, holographic uh, printable vinyl like this before. But I don't know. I, th I don't know. That just really adds in a nice playful element to, you know, kind of a playful scenario right here. I like the look of that like that. And I like how it changes, you know, just depending on the angle like that. <laughs> You know, we we're talking about different types of things. If you want to add in that little extra element, you can do one of those slider things like that where you're doing something like that. Or I think the slider thing on this one, if I were to do it, I would do it for the cows and have that little pull tab up top where these cows are getting dragged up like that. You know, it create a little bit of a slit down here like that, but who cares, right? The, the card we, you know, we're making this card for, uh, you know, that five to 10 year old. <laughs> And we were, you know, we're, we're making that card for the five to 10 year old recipient and then keeping it ourselves like that, you know, after we're done with it and giving them a, you know, uh, you know, uh, card from Hallmark <laughs> or whatever. We're doing a quick card, photo stamping card. Yeah. Do do, you know, your alien abduction card for a, for a kid, just, you know, um, Take a photograph of a night sky or print out a night sky. Do the beam down here like that. And, uh, you know, 10 minutes. Keep this card for yourself. <laughs> All right. So anyway. Good night. Good day. Good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Had so much fun with you. A night five with you all. Thanks so much for joining it in. All right. Good night, everyone. Uh, I'll have to format this card. I'm going to have to think of a, a good kind of a matting on this and uh, exterior like this. Maybe I'll go with a little bit of a I, I'm trying to think of a maybe I'll go with a holographic mat around the edge. Like There's something like this or uh, do I use something like this on here? Eh, maybe that would distract from it, you know? I don't know. I'll try to think of something cool. 
or do we just go with something really plain, you know, to not compete with this type of thing like that? I don't know. Think of something good. Oh, maybe silver to match some of that silver right there of the uh, the crystals in that uh, spaceship. Yeah. I don't know. I'll think about it. I'll sleep on it like this if I'm not uh, abducted tonight um, as a, you know, payback for, uh, you know, exposing, uh, exposing the truth here. <laughs> All right. Good night, folks. We'll see you on the next, uh, whatever, Stampscapes Live, hopefully.